Yo, what's good everybody? It's CP the Doc, and today I got a super long video for you guys. First things first, I'm attempting to go 12-0 and 0 in NBA 2K21, my team unlimited, because I really want that pink diamond Patrick Ewing that you see on the right side of the screen. And second, you probably could have guessed this by looking at the length of the video, but I'm probably not going to edit this video one bit, so I really have no idea how long it's going to be right now. And that means you guys get to see all the mistakes I make in my gameplay. And if I make any mistakes with my commentary, which I definitely will, I'm not going to edit those out either. That could be kind of embarrassing for me, but at the same time, since this is going to be a super long video, I think this is a good chance for me to talk about NBA trades, the NBA draft, Next Gen 2K, the NFL, a lot of things like that. So whether you're watching and paying attention to my gameplay, or just chilling and listening to me talk about NBA stuff, I think this is a cool way for me to express myself while also giving you guys gameplay. And I want to know your opinions on this stuff as well. So feel free to comment your ideas on this video, your opinions about what I'm talking about, because you guys know I respond to most comments anyway. Also, last thing before we get started, y'all let me know what you think of this super long video. I stream a lot, but I never make videos that are super long like this one's probably going to be. This is kind of like a stream with no live chat, so it's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of silence. Well, not too much silence, but definitely more than usual. Let me know what you think of that. Let me know if you enjoy these long videos where I'm literally just playing, recording, just grinding out these games while talking to y'all about different things, I guess. I think I've said pretty much everything I need to say. I hope you guys enjoy this video, man. I would love it if you dropped a like for me if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel, helps out this video, and only takes one second. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I promise not <laughs> I promise not all my videos are this long. There's a commentary mistake already. So bear with me this video. Bear with me. That's the first commentary mistake of many. They're gonna happen all the time, man. I promise. Let me plug in my phone to my charger. Let me move some stuff around on my desk. And let's get things started, man. Let's get right to it. We're playing on our home floor, the first game of the stream. And this is one thing I'd like to point out before we get, like, this gameplay kicked off. I do have Next Gen 2K. If I pull up my home screen, you can see it right here above my head. But I haven't really gotten used to playing Unlimited yet on Next Gen. So we're going to play on Current Gen. I'm right here just chilling playing it on current gen, and I'm using Blake, I'm using Steph, because I feel like we might get some rage quits if some people see those guys in my lineup, so that's why I'm using Steph and Blake, I'm also using LeBron, CJ, I'm using LaMarcus, and I have a lot of budget cards off my bench. If you guys think that is really cheesy, I understand, because, I mean, my real team is a lot better than this one, but see... Just having Steph being able to do that, come down the court and shoot like that every single time, it just, it demoralizes your opponent, and y'all know I'm not too much of a toxic player, but I do like to get through these games fast. So, yeah, see, if he's shooting shots like that, if I'm hitting shots with Steph Curry, if I'm getting to the rim, then we're going to be good. We're going to be good. We're going to get through these games. Maybe not insanely fast, but... I don't know. We'll see how things go. Like I said earlier, if you guys are here actually paying attention to the gameplay, that's cool, but I think I'm going to start talking about NBA news pretty soon, too, because we've had some really interesting stuff go down. I think I'm going to wait until after I score right here, because he's locked in on defense, leaving LaMarcus wide open. Nice rebound by Blake. Let's get a bucket right here, and then we're going to start talking about trades. Well, actually, I really don't have to wait. I mean, we're going to get our bucket either way. And yeah, let's just go ahead and start talking, man. I think the most interesting trade that happened yesterday, also I'm saying yesterday, this is another detail I want to get out of the way. If you guys are wondering when I'm recording this video, this is on Tuesday. I think today is the 17th. So... Let's say a trade happens Tuesday at noon. Let's say James Harden gets traded to the Nets or something at noon today. I don't know about it yet because that hasn't yet happened yet. It's in the future. And I'm probably going to be uploading this video on Wednesday. 
the day of the draft. So, yeah, if you guys are like, you didn't mention this trade or you didn't mention this happening or you didn't mention this rumor, it's because I probably don't know about it yet because it is Tuesday. I think it's like 9 in the morning too. I'm not sure the exact time, but it is something like that. So, yeah, first things first. I mean, the biggest thing that went down yesterday, well... We had a lot of big things go down yesterday, but I'd say the most important one was definitely Drew Holiday getting traded to the Bucks. I think that was the first one that went down. And you guys might not think this is the biggest thing. You guys might think, for example, Chris Paul is better than Drew Holiday. And if you think so, that's okay. I'm not going to like dispute you on that one. But I feel like that's the most important one because all offseason, even though it hasn't been a super long offseason, We've been talking about Giannis possibly leaving, Giannis declining his player option or whatever. Is it a player option? I don't think it's actually a player option. But basically, Giannis is going to turn down, signing his extension, signing that extension. I don't know why I didn't think of that immediately. But he's going to turn down the extension and the Bucks are going to trade him because they don't want to lose him in free agency. And because the Bucks want to keep him in like free agency, because the Bucks want to bring him back, they want to make moves to make their roster better. And getting Drew Holiday was a very good move. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they traded away a bunch of draft picks. I think it was three definite first-round picks and two pick swaps. They also traded away Eric Bledsoe, who's their starting point guard, which is interesting. They traded away Bledsoe and George Hill, their starting point guard and their backup point guard. They might have traded away one more player, too. No, they didn't trade away any more players in that trade. But they did make another trade later, which I will bring up. Don't worry. So, yeah, like I was saying, they trade away Bledsoe. They trade away George Hill. And they pick up Drew Holiday, which is a very big pickup. Some of you guys might think they traded away too much. I wouldn't blame you if you thought they traded away too much. But, I mean, really, Drew Holiday is a great pickup. Eric Bledsoe is another good player, but he has under, underperformed in the playoffs. Excuse me. George Hill is a good pickup. I want to say that it was a year or two ago where he led the NBA in three-point percentage, which was kind of out of nowhere, kind of an interesting thing. He's a pretty good backup point guard. That's a good pickup for the Pelicans. But we're not really talking about the Pelicans right now. I feel like this is more about the, the Bucks. So the Bucks trade away two rotation pieces. They trade away their starting PG and the backup PG. And they pick up Drew, who I feel like, even though he's been so highly coveted in free agency, I feel like he's still a little bit underrated because he can score the ball in so many ways. There are so many things he can do with it. And he's just a fun player to watch. He doesn't shoot amazingly from three, but he shoots well enough to where... You got to make sure you don't sag off of him. Of course, he's great defensively. He's a great playmaker. Definitely better than Bledsoe, even though Bledsoe wasn't bad. Drew Holiday is a great pickup. You guys know that. I know that. And, yeah, that's not the only pickup the Bucks made yesterday. Yeah, they traded for Drew Holiday. They also traded for Bogdan Bogdanovich from the Sacramento Kings. And, now, this is the trade that, of course, they didn't give away any stars. Of course, they still have Giannis. They still have Chris Milton. They still have all those guys. But they traded away Ursan Ilyasova. They traded away Dante DiVincenzo. Which really surprised me. That really caught me off guard. That they traded away DiVincenzo. They also traded away DJ Wilson. Who, he's no all-star superstar or anything. But he's a good young player. I want to say they might have also thrown a couple draft picks in this move too. I really can't remember. I really can't remember. But... Bogdan Bogdanovich. That's a good pickup, man. Say what you want to. That's a great pickup. I like that acquisition. So, the Bucks bench, yeah, those guys are important. But, at the same time, the Bucks' new starting lineup is looking like you got Drew Holiday at the 1. You got Bogdan at the 2. Chris Middleton at the 3. And, what, what am I here for, man? Shot aiming off. That's why I meant to turn off. Also, I gotta turn off rotations. For some reason, my all of my little settings are weird. All those were on auto, now they're back on manual. 
Like I was saying, though, starting lineup for the Bucks. You got Brooke Lopez at the five. It was cool that they kept him. You got Giannis at the four. I mean, they aren't going to trade him away just yet. Middleton, Bogdan, Drew. Pretty good moves, man. Pretty good moves. You guys are probably like, what? You think those are good moves? They gave up way too much, way too much to get two players in return. And I see where you're coming from, but keep in mind, let's say Giannis leaves in free agency next offseason and is like, y'all didn't make enough moves last offseason to keep me. But now you can say they made some pretty good moves. They definitely made moves. They definitely went all in. I should have said that earlier. They definitely just went all in with these trades, which you got to commend them for, man. It's bold, but also I feel like they did what they had to do. So that's cool for the Bucks. I'm not sure if they're the definitive number one team in the East. Actually, I think they are. I mean, they've been number one in the East for two straight years now. I can definitely see them being number one for three straight years. I mean, of course, everyone's saying if Brooklyn gets James Harden, they're going to be number one. Actually, how many guys are actually saying that? Because let's be real. If they do pick up James Harden, that would be such a bad defensive backcourt. That's not the point, though. That's not really the point I'm making. We'll talk about those rumors later. I will go ahead and say, though, I do think they're kind of interesting rumors, kind of weird rumors at that. All right, so Milwaukee talked about those trades. What other trades we got yesterday? The next biggest trade. We got Chris Paul. We got Chris Paul going to the Suns. Another, see, the thing about these trades that happened yesterday that are so interesting is that you can see how both sides are getting good things in return. Because the Pelicans, they're getting some veteran leadership in both Bledsoe and George Hill. And they're also getting five draft picks. And at the same time, the Bucks are getting a really good guy to compliment Giannis. He doesn't need the ball in his hands all the time. He can play well enough off the ball. He does a lot of things well. A lot of things well. And see, it's cool that the Bucks got their guy. But the Pelicans also got some good pieces for their future. So I think that's a win-win. Of course, I don't think either team's lost the trade yet, but we'll have to wait to see how these trades turn out for both teams because there's a likelihood that even though the Bucks made these trades, Giannis leaves anyway. But since they got Drew, since they got Bogdan, since they're still going to have Middleton, assuming Giannis does leave, the Bucks are still in a decent spot. I mean, the Bucks are kind of screwed either way if Giannis leaves. Because if Giannis leaves, there goes, you know, the Bucks' best chance of winning a championship since, was it 1973? So whether the Bucks make these big trades or not, they're kind of screwed, right? Because if Giannis leaves without them making trades, then they didn't do enough. But at least if Giannis leaves now, they've done enough. That's my opinion, though. So yeah, I'm stalling, man. Let me talk about Chris Paul next. Chris Paul to the Suns. Now, like I said earlier, win-win trades. They're pretty cool. But this trade does seem a little bit weird if you take a if you just take a step back and look at it. Because the Suns, yeah, they get Chris Paul. I think they also get Abdul Nader from the Thunder. But at the same time, I mean, they're giving up. Kelly Oubre Jr., who's coming off the best season of his career. They're giving up. Who else are they giving up, man? Ty Jerome, who was a first-round pick last year. He's not the biggest one they're losing. They're also giving up Ricky Rubio. And I'm going to be honest, man. A lot of you guys probably think Ricky Rubio's a scrub. That's a pretty big piece of the Suns this past year, man, that they're giving up. So I think that's super interesting. They're giving up. Yeah, Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio. Ty Jerome, and Jalen LeCue. You guys are probably like, who cares about Jalen LeCue? Jalen LeCue? He's pretty athletic, man. He's an athletic freak. He's not much taller than, what, six feet? And he can jump up from the free throw line and dunk that thing, man. But then again, he's not going to be a big rotation player for the Thunder. So the Thunder, I'm pretty sure they also got some picks in return. Even if they didn't get picks in return. Actually, no, they did get picks in return. Can't remember how many it was, but they definitely 
got picks in return. What I'm saying is, what I'm trying to say here is that the Thunder, these are some decent moves for their future because Oubre is 25 years old. Ty Jerome, Jalen LeCure, also young. And for what it's worth, Ricky Rubio, no, he's not Chris Paul. No, he's not going to be like a pound for pound, point for point, assist, assist, replacement for Chris Paul. But he's still a solid point guard. Still a solid point guard. I think the Thunder, I mean, they're stocking up the draft picks, man. They stocked up all those draft picks from trading away Paul George. Now they're getting even more draft picks from trading away Chris Paul, which is crazy, right? So many draft picks, so many first round picks in the next few years. Y'all already know they're going to swing and get some good players by, you know, getting those picks in. They're going to make some good picks. They might make a bad pick, might make a couple bad picks. Still a very good pickup for the Thunder getting all those guys while also getting those draft picks. I've talked about the Thunder for the past few minutes. I'm rambling on and on, but you guys knew I was going to do this. I told y'all earlier. Let's talk about the Suns. Where does this put the Suns in the Western Conference? You got Chris Paul, who's coming off an all-star, all-NBA season, which is good. Very good. You got Devin Booker, who's also coming off an all-star season. Like I said earlier, or a few seconds ago, also pretty cool. No more Kelly Oubre, but the Suns went 8-0 in the bubble without Kelly Oubre. They still have Cameron Johnson, they still have Mikael Bridges, two guys who can develop into good defenders, who can be pretty good shooters for them. And of course, they still got DeAndre Ayton, who's a huge piece of their future, their former number one overall pick. We're going to see how he develops. I think he's going to be even better, even better with Chris Paul on his team, running the pick and roll with him, finding him for open shots, open layups, open dunks, just stuff like that. I think that Chris Paul is really going to help out with DeAndre Ayton's development which is dope because DeAndre Aiden, his career's off to a good start. But I feel like he could be better, you know? And to be fair, he did have to set out a bunch of games last year because, what, was he taking steroids or something? I know he had to sit out a bunch of games. 25 games, I think it was. He came back and the Suns started doing better. So to be fair, even though that was in his control, even though he shouldn't have taken those performance-enhancing drugs or whatever they were, I mean... He's still a good player, still put up good numbers, still off to a good start in his career. So, like, I think Chris Paul is going to help out with his development for sure. I think that Chris Paul is going to help Devin Booker get some easier looks too. I think Chris Paul is going to just, he's just going to be like an on-court coach for all these guys. He's going to, keep in mind, the Suns have so much young talent. I think he's going to help guys like Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson come along. And another guy who I think is pretty underrated that you guys probably forgot the Suns still have. They still have Aaron Baines. Forget about how much he gets dunked on. They still got him. Got some guys off the bench. I think the Suns can be pretty good. And keep in mind, they're not done bolstering their roster just yet. They're going to make some more changes, I think. How many more changes? I really have no idea. We'll have to see. We're definitely going to have to see. But the Suns, I think they're going to be... A top six team in the West. Now let's talk about this. How many teams right now are better than the Suns? In your opinion. How many teams are better than the Suns right now in the West? I think the Warriors are going to be better than the Suns. I think the Lakers might be better than the Suns. They will be. They will be. I don't know why I said might. I think you got the Clippers up there too. Say what you want about the Clippers. They're still a, I was going to say a class organization. But in all reality, they're still going to compete. Like, no matter what moves they make or don't make, they're still going to compete, I think. So we got the Nuggets, too. We got the Nuggets as well. I was going to say the Rockets, too, but it's not looking as good for the Rockets because of all these James Harden and all these Russell Westbrook rumors. The Rockets could be decent, but it also depends on the return they get if they do trade away Harden and Westbrook, which we'll have to see what they do about that for sure. This guy's using Joakim Noah, so I'm just going to paint sit. But yeah, I mean, there are definitely some teams I'm forgetting. You can argue the Mavericks are going to be better than the Suns. Also depends on what moves they make in free agency. How good are the Spurs going to be? I don't know. It really does depend on whether or not they trade away DeMar DeRozan and Aldridge. Make a good draft pick. I mean, we'll have to see. Spurs could be up there. The Grizzlies are going to be back. The Trailblazers are going to be back. And I kind of went off on a tangent because I told you guys I was going to talk about trades. 
I told you guys I was going to talk about trades. But speaking of trades, the Rockets, they traded away... They traded away Robert Covington to the Trailblazers in return for Trevor Ariza and two first-round picks. I think that's a good trade for both teams. I mean, the Rockets, you've heard all these rumors about them trading away Harden, trading away Russ. And let's be real, if they trade away either of those guys, it's over for them competing for a championship. You can argue they weren't good enough to compete for a championship this year, but there were some times where they were looking pretty good. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen for the Rockets. They trade away Robert Covington, who was a great perimeter defender, great shooter. I don't think the word great's an understatement. I think he really was great and was a big part of the Rockets. They were definitely hoping they could hold on to him, but sadly they couldn't. Either way, it's kind of funny that the Rockets get... Trevor Ariza in return because Trevor Ariza used to play for the Rockets and I remember before the Trailblazers picked him up the Rockets I think they were struggling to start one season and they were definitely talking about getting him back but they didn't get him back but now they did get him back so like there we go I mean Rockets get Trevor Ariza back they also get two draft picks which is cool and Trailblazers get another guy to pair with Dame, CJ, Nurkic, Whiteside. And Trevor Ariza, he wasn't a super integral rotation player, I think. Of course, he was in the rotation. He didn't play in the bubble. But Trevor Ariza, pretty integral piece of that Trailblazers team, who they aren't losing much by trading away, if that makes any sense. So yeah, you guys got the picture. I mean... They're looking pretty good, the Trailblazers, with that trade. Suns are looking good with their trade. Thunder, even though they may not be a super good team in the West, are still looking good with their trade. Bucks looking solid with their trade. Pelicans trading for three more first-round picks. And keep in mind, they also traded for three first-round picks when they gave up Anthony Davis. Man, these teams are just adding up so much young talent. It's crazy. It's crazy. What are some more low-key moves? This isn't a low-key move, but it's a move that you guys are probably like, why hasn't he talked about it yet? Lakers get Dennis Schroeder from the Thunder in return for Danny Green. And what, the number 28 pick in the draft? That's That sounds like highway robbery, man. Of course, Danny Green is on an expiring contract. And of course, that pick isn't super high in the draft. So, like, it's just so crazy because Dennis Schroeder's coming off a great season. Great season. Best season of his career. He played great off the bench. And the most interesting thing about Dennis Schroeder this past season was that he's not known as a real defensive player, but he played great defense this season. He's also not really known as a lights-out three-point shooter. And it's not like he was completely lights-out this season, but he shot pretty well from three this season, man. So, two things going up against Trevor Ariza's, not Trevor Ariza, Dennis Schroeder's reputation. And he kind of disproves them in the same season. And then the Lakers pick this guy up. And of course you can talk about, is he going to go back to being a bad three-point shooter? Is he going to go back to being a bad defender? We'll have to see. We will really have to see. But, I mean, if we get the Dennis Schroeder from last season, or if the Lakers get the Dennis Schroeder from last season, that's a big pickup for the Lakers. I mean, even if Dennis Schroeder is what, like 80, 90% of what he was last year, that's still a great pickup for the Lakers. Still a very good pickup for the Lakers. Like you can't complain about that. So this might mean that the Lakers aren't gonna bring back Rondo because if, I mean, if you got Dennis Schroeder now, of course Rondo would be great to have back. But then again, you could argue that What's his name? Schroeder will be the starting point guard for the Lakers. And then Rondo can back him up. But at the same time, you know the Lakers love having LeBron as the point guard. So we'll have to see what they do with that. I'm not 100% sure whether or not the Lakers bring back KCP, Rondo, all those guys now. But Dennis Schroeder, as of right now, is a great pickup. And I guess we can talk about Anthony Davis opting out of his contract. But we all know he's going to resign. We all know AD's re-signing with the Lakers. Or I know that at least. Maybe you guys don't agree, but I definitely know that. So we talked about the Trailblazers for a little bit. Talked about the Rockets. Talked about the Lakers, Suns, Bucks. Oh yeah, so talked about free agency. Not free agency. Well, 
I guess free agency is about to start in like... Today's the 17th, the draft is tomorrow, or today, as you're watching this video. Friday, free agency starts. Yeah, Friday is the 20th, so... Free agency begins. I'm pretty sure AD is going to re-sign. A lot of the guys who are free agents, I'm pretty sure they're just going to end up re-signing with the teams they're on right now. I mean, you got Brandon Ingram, but he's restricted. You got Andre Drummond, but of course he's going to opt into his player option because he wants to make that 28 mil, even though he might not be worth 28 mil. Anthony Davis wants to restructure his contract, so he's going to re-sign. It's just weird. Free agency, man. Not the same as it usually is. Not the same. You hear rumors about guys like Gordon Hayward wanting out. Speaking of guys wanting out, I did say I was going to talk about this earlier. Let's talk about the Rockets for a second, man. Let's talk about the Rockets. So, in my stream the other day, you guys were like, man, James Harden wants out. And I said, I haven't heard that rumor. I have not heard that yet. And I was like, he also said that he wants to stay with the Rockets. But next thing you know, yesterday, I hear that James Harden does demand a trade. And that he's growing pretty uneasy with how the Rockets are looking in the future. So, you guys were right. You guys were right. James Harden indeed wants out. And that's pretty crazy, man. James Harden's been the man for the Rockets for so many years. But the question is, are the Rockets really going to trade him? Because let's be honest, they don't they don't have to if they don't want to. Also, everybody's talking about James Harden to the Nets. Earlier, I think I mentioned why I don't think that's going to work. Let's talk about it a little bit. I mean, first of all, I talked about the defense and everything earlier. But also, I did read a report that said the Nets, they, like, they would only consider trading, like, Kyrie or... Wait, no, no, no. The Rockets said that if they trade away Harden, they better get back, like, Kyrie or KD. But you already know the Nets aren't going to do that. Like, why would they do that? Exactly. And the Sixers, they don't want to part with either Embiid or Simmons. So, like, basically, these teams, basically the Rockets don't want, like, Karis LeVert and Dinwiddie in return. Even if all the players value together may equal James Harden, like, they do not want anything in return that's not, like, a superstar, which makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Once this game's over, I'm going to do these settings on the menu, like the My Team menu, just so I don't have to do them again. I've done them like three times now, so I'll do this once this game's over. Hopefully this guy quits soon. Like I was saying, though, it's weird because the Rockets, they have a guy in James Harden who wants, he, who, he wants out, man. He doesn't want to be there. But there's all these teams that he wants to go to, but these teams he wants to go to they don't want to go through the trouble to get them, you know? I mean, they do, but like, like I said, it's weird. NBA is weird right now, man. Free agency is weird. Trades are weird. This guy I'm playing versus is also kind of weird. I got to play better, make him quit. Let's get Boris Dio out of there, get Griffin back in there. Let's get LeBron back in there. Now let's talk basketball again. Okay, like I was saying, oh, come on. Not a big deal. <sighs> I've talked about James Harden enough. Let's talk about Russell Westbrook. I'm a Knicks fan, so talks about Russell Westbrook have been, been heating up a little bit, man. These talks about Westbrook have been heating up for sure. What do I think of them? I mean, as a Knicks fan, it would be interesting seeing Westbrook in New York. But as a Knicks fan, I mean, okay, let's be real. I can talk about that not being a move to win a championship, but like, no matter what move the Knicks make this offseason, it's not going to lead directly to a championship. So like, I don't need to think like that. That is such a try-hard, sweat way to think. Like, ugh, getting Russell Westbrook's not going to win as a championship. It's going to get us back in the playoffs for the first time in how many years? 2013. 2013 was the last time we Knicks made the playoffs. Been a long time, man. It's been a long, long time. It's been a long, long time. So, getting Westbrook will be cool. It may not be a championship winning move, but like, at this point, what even is a championship winning move? You know what I mean? Like, I might as well just say 
Jones. Let's get Westbrook. But in my opinion, I also want to make sure we keep our draft pick, you know? I don't know. Who do you guys think the Knicks should draft? You guys ask me this question in my streams all the time. Who should the Knicks draft? And it really depends on who does fall to the Knicks because this draft is interesting. I also mentioned earlier I was going to talk about the draft, so I guess here's my quick spiel about the NBA draft. I'm excited for it because I'm not as excited for, like, the top three picks because we know who the picks are going to be. We know what players are going to go in the top three, like, no matter what. What I am interested in is seeing the fact that we know that some of these teams are going to trade their picks. We know for certain some of these teams are going to trade their picks. Who's it going to be, though? Because we all know it's going to be Wiseman, LaMelo, and Anthony Edwards, not in that order. But these teams, like the Pistons, want to trade up. Other teams like the Celtics, they want to trade up. So let's say a team like the Celtics somehow trades into the top, the top how many? Top five. They've made it really clear they want a Kong Wu, so I guess this doesn't apply. But let's say the Bulls trade up to make sure they get LaMelo Ball. That would be interesting. And it would be interesting seeing what they trade, who they value, who they're willing to trade for, let's say, the number three pick and LaMelo Ball. That's what I'm interested in, because we're going to see some interesting trades on draft night. Are we going to see any blockbusters? I guess it really depends on what you consider a blockbuster, because if you wanted to, you could consider these Chris Paul trades that I mentioned earlier. You could consider those blockbusters. Are they really, though? Chris Paul is the best player who's gotten traded in the last few days, and he averaged, what, like 17-6, and six? maybe more than that? And I know his value to a team. I know his impact on winning, but, like, he did average 17-6. and six. Dennis Schroeder. He can put up 20 on any given night, of course. We all know that. Um, other good players that got traded. Got Drew Holiday, who was, once again, he didn't average 20, but he could put up 20 on any given night, of course. A lot of these guys can, who I've been talking about. And it's not all about scoring. Like, scoring is not the only impact on winning, you know? Just because Chris Paul's not dropping 40 every night doesn't mean he's not a good player. So let me stop talking about scoring as much, because other things like efficiency... Plus minus. I mean, then again, plus minus isn't super important. Just other stats are a lot more important than scoring. So I know I'm bringing up points per game a lot, but it really doesn't come all down to points per game, if you ask me. But yeah, this draft is going to be interesting. Number one, the Timberwolves. And I'm bringing up a lot of questions that you guys have asked me in the streams. One of those questions is, who do you think the Timberwolves are going to draft? And it really does depend on whether or not they keep their pick. Because I feel like the best fit next to D'Angelo Russell is Anthony Edwards. But, LaMelo Ball does have that superstar potential. I'm not going to sit here and act like LaMelo does not have potential to be a superstar. I feel like he has a higher ceiling than Anthony Edwards does. But I feel like right now, Anthony Edwards is a safer pick. I feel like James Wiseman... I mean... He would learn a lot from Carl Towns for sure. I mean, Carl Towns is a super versatile scoring big man. Arguably one of the most versatile scorers ever. Scorers ever. Maybe not offensive players, because his assisting, his playmaking isn't super well-rounded. But, like, scoring-wise, he can do it all. Anyways, I think you guys get what I mean right there. Um, James Wiseman, it wouldn't be a great fit, because... You could draft a guy in Anthony Edwards who's going to start right off the bat. He's going to get to develop right off the bat. But if you pick up James Wiseman, I mean, you wouldn't want to play him at a power forward, right? And you'd want to give him minutes right off the bat because he's known as a star. He's that guy. Like, you can draft him, play him immediately, and he'll get you. Will he get you some wins? I don't know about that. But he's a good player who, if developed correctly, can be really good for your team. Is what I'm trying to say here. I think you guys get that. I feel like the best fit for him is the Hornets, because they could use a center. Of course, the Hornets could keep on using Cody Zeller. He's been their guy for years. They could go crazy and move P.J. Washington down to the five, because small ball really is crazy in the NBA. You guys know that. Small ball's all the rage. And what he's what, like six foot eight, six foot seven? I feel like someone told me he's actually six foot seven one time. I mean, either way, either way, 
I feel like James Wiseman would be he would be a good fit with the with the Hornets at the five, Wiseman at the four. I guess you got Miles Bridges still at the three. You got Terry Rozier at the one and Devontae Graham at the two, even though he's like what, six one, six two? Not super tall. The Hornets are an interesting team. No superstar for real. But they have some guys who can become stars. I'm not sure if you guys are super high on Malik Monk or not, but he could be solid. I mean, why am I talking about the Hornets? Shout out to my boy Puff. He's always in my streams. And he's a Hornets fan, but... Yeah, no need to talk much about the Hornets. Not No need to talk about them too much. But I will say this. Low-key, if James Wiseman can develop nicely for them, if they do draft James Wiseman, I can see the Hornets being a playoff team in a couple of years. I really do. I think the Hornets can be a really interesting team. Good shot, Steph. Wonder if this guy's gonna quit. My first two guys quit. This guy hasn't quit yet. Anyways, anyways. So I don't have much else to say about the draft. It's gonna be interesting seeing where guys like guys who were pretty high on the mock drafts months ago, like Cole Anthony. It's gonna be interesting seeing where he goes. It's gonna be interesting seeing who picks up Denny, RJ Hampton, Halliburton. I would love to see the Knicks draft him. But I would also love to see the Knicks trade for Russ, and he would be the point guard. And the Knicks already have so many point guards. Elfred, you got Neil Aquina. Still got Dennis Smith Jr. too. You guys probably forgot about him. Um, a lot of point guards. A lot of point guards. So seeing them pick up somebody like Obi Toppin will be pretty cool too, because even though Obi is a super intriguing prospect, I have definitely seen some mock drafts where his stock is, well, stock isn't falling, but his position on the mock drafts is kind of low is what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. His position on the drafts, lower than I expected, lower than it was months ago. I can see Obi going at number four to the Bulls. I could also see him going number eight to the Knicks, which would be pretty cool because the Knicks, I feel like we need some wing players. You got the guards. You got RJ Barrett playing the two, maybe the three if you want to put him there. At the center, you got Mitchell Robinson. Of course, there's still Julius Randle. They call him the Human Beyblade. It's interesting, man. Still Mo Harkless. I feel like you can get an upgrade over Mo Harkless in the draft. And I feel like you can definitely get a point guard upgrade, but that might end up being Westbrook. We'll have to see. We will have to see about that. I just talked about the Knicks. I think I talked about the Nets a little bit earlier. I didn't really linger on them much. I kind of just said that a trade for James Harden doesn't make much sense. You guys say what you want to about that. Feel free to agree or disagree. I just feel like it doesn't make much sense. As LeBron hits the floor. Oh, man. NBA starts in about a month. That's kind of crazy, man. For real. It's a beautiful thing, but it's also kind of crazy that it starts so soon. Look at Blake, man. Inspirational. I wonder what the Christmas games are going to be. I've heard some rumblings. I've heard some rumors that the Warriors and the Lakers are playing. The Warriors are an interesting case. I think this is another team that I wanted to talk about when I was like outlining in my head earlier this stream. The Warriors, I feel like they could win a championship. I don't think they will, but I feel like it's doable. Well, if I had to bet on it, not going to happen. If I had to choose a team right now, probably either the Lakers or the Bucks. But, I mean, let's think about this real quick. You guys probably think I'm crazy. But they're bringing back all their guys. They're bringing back Steph, Clay, and Dre. Which, that's a big three. I've also heard rumors that they might try to weigh Draymond. But we all know Draymond has some pretty good impact on winning over in Golden State. They're missing depth. They have their good guys. They have Andrew Wiggins, but they're missing depth. They're missing depth for sure. All those years, the Warriors won championships. They had guys like Sean Livingston on the bench. They had David West. They had DeAndre Barbosa. They had David Lee when Draymond began his time as the starter for the Knicks. Knicks? No, Warriors. I don't know why I said Knicks. I think it's because we were just talking about the Knicks. The Warriors have always had some good backups, man. The best of those backups was definitely Andre Iguodala. And the reason why guys like Iguodala are so highly coveted in free agency, the reason why he was so highly coveted in trade requests this past year, 
is because he's so versatile. He can actually do stuff off the dribble. He can find open shooters. He can knock down threes himself. And most importantly, he's just an annoying defender. The Warriors need guys like that. Of course, drafting Wiseman at number two, I know everyone's saying that's a pretty good fit. And it is a good fit. I mean, Wiseman is super athletic. He can finish lobs just like, you know, Bogut and Kevon Looney and Damian Jones have been over the years. But he can also do more than that. He can help the Warriors run some five out, man. He's got some nice shooting form. He's got potential to get a nice shot going. And he can space the floor out for the Warriors insanely well. So that is definitely something that he can do. But the Warriors can also use that number two pick and Andrew Wiggins and maybe even Draymond if they really were going crazy to trade for some depth for a bunch of different players. Earlier, we were talking about Ersan Ilyasova. We were talking about George Hill. We also talked about who? Dante DiVincenzo. None of those guys are superstars. Ersan Ilyasova, he's not a superstar. But he's still big for the Bucks, or was big for the Bucks. I mean, all these guys, like Livingston, like Barbosa, I talked about earlier. The reason they were so big for the Warriors is when, or because, when Steph goes out of the game, Sean Livingston subs into the game, and it's his job to score like 8, 10 points a game on those fadeaway jumpers. Maybe he'll get to the rim a little bit. And he'll play some good defense too. So that was the big thing about Livingston. He's just a good sub for Curry. Didn't even have to play that many minutes. But you can't play Steph every minute of every game, especially in the regular season. That's why you need depth, because if you want to get good playoff position, you got to have guys who you can trust to come in off the bench. Yeah, in the playoffs, but in, ro in the playoffs, rotations shrink a little bit. So, I feel like the Warriors, I feel like, honestly, they're good at the center position. You guys are probably like, what? Are you crazy? Let's be real. Kevon Looney's not too bad. The Warriors, they won championships with Zaza starting at the center. They won championships with Zaza at the center. They also won a championship with Harrison Barnes in there at the small forward. They won a championship without KD. Say what you want to about the Cavaliers being injured. Harrison Barnes was a smart starting small forward for that championship team. And Bogut was a starter too for two of those years. Zaza, Bogut were two championship winning big men. I know that Bogut is a former number one pick. I know that his career was kind of messed up by injuries, but come on, man. Bogut, he's good. He's good. Like I said, I got respect for him. Good player. But, I mean, Wiseman, in terms of skill, just the upgrade over Bogut's insane. But I don't feel like they need that upgrade. I feel like they need another point guard because I think right now their backup point guard is like Kai Bowman. I think their backup shooting guard is like Jordan Poole. I mean, these guys have potential, but like I'd trade for like established players, guys for depth if I were the Warriors. Then again, they could also use the, their assets to trade for a star. I don't know who that star is going to be. You guys let me know in the comments who you think that star should be. Earlier, I talked about my boy Puff. Let me talk about my guy Ryan too. Shout out to Royal Ryan. I've been I've been recording for a while now, man. This video is up to like has it been 40 minutes? I really don't know yet, but I've been talking for a while, so I'm not sure how many of you guys are still listening right now. But like I was saying, Ryan sent me this thing on Instagram, and he was talking about how the Warriors were possibly trading away their number two pick and Draymond Green. It might have been someone else, too. It might have been Wiggins, but I think it was just the draft pick and Draymond. I think it was the draft pick and Draymond, and in return, the Warriors get Kevin Love. And I feel like Kevin Love's a guy who's regressing. I feel like the Warriors could do better with the number two pick and Draymond, even though Kevin Love, you can say what you want about him. A lot of people probably feel a lot of different things about Kevin Love. Some people probably think that Kevin Love is just a stat patter, a guy who put up big stats in Minnesota. But then came to Cleveland, and we all got to see that he couldn't really do that when he's like a more a more low-key piece as opposed to being the big star, if y'all know what I mean. But I mean, that's also because he was playing with LeBron, Kyrie. He, I wouldn't say he was getting carried because he did put up some good numbers in those playoff appearances, but like... He has never made a playoff run without LeBron on his team, which is something to point out, but like, Kevin Love is still good, and he does a lot of good things for you. Great rebounder, a 
bit of a defensive liability, though. Offensively great, great post scorer. I mean, just a, like a week ago or so, it was the anniversary of his 30-30 game. 30 and 30 is crazy, man. You got to have some crazy motor to put up 30 and 30 on any given night. Kevin Love used to put up some crazy numbers, man. I was going to say I think people forget about that, but that's not really true. I don't think anybody forgets about that. It's just that he's in Cleveland. Not many people talk about Cleveland. I haven't even talked about Cleveland yet. Is there a possibility that LaMelo Ball falls to Cleveland? Because just last week, there were a lot of reports saying that LaMelo could fall in the draft. I don't think he will, though. Definitely not past number three. Definitely not past number three. I'm kind of just talking about every single team here, man. Of course, I started off by talking about the trades that happened yesterday and earlier in free, not free agency, in the offseason. But the free agency does begin in three days or two days from the day you're watching this video. So that is definitely something there. That is definitely something. I would do a prediction of the standings, but I feel like it's a bit too early. I'll do that after free agency, maybe if I do another one of these videos. You guys let me know at this exact second what you're thinking of this video. I've probably lost a bunch of you guys too, I don't know how many of y'all are still watching. Another thing I should have thought out earlier too, I have class at, what time, 12.30? Right now it's 9.48, so low key... I might have to just log into my Zoom class and, you know, just sit in there while I play this and commentate. And I gotta cross my fingers that my professor doesn't unmute me because that could be really embarrassing if he just unmutes me. And here's my commentary. It would be even worse if I have him on mute. So he's trying to get my attention. He's saying, Doc, Doc. And it turns out I can't even hear him. That would be embarrassing, man. I don't think that's going to happen, though. This professor doesn't really call on people. So, not super worried about that. I'm just hoping I get more rage quits. Because those first two games were both rage quits. And this guy, he would rage quit. But he also has a lot of players on his team who he's trying to get challenges done with. I noticed he had Doncic in there, who he's for sure doing challenges with. I saw Trey Young in there, too. Also another challenge player. So, this guy was just trying to get challenges done. He was trying to play minutes with guys in Unlimited. And even though this game was a long one, even though we had to play this entire game, it still has been less than an hour. And three wins in less than an hour. I mean, you can't really complain about that. Hopefully we can get more quits. Hopefully we don't run into too many more guys like this. Just so the clock keeps on running, I'm going to dribble it out a little bit. I'm going to dribble it out a little bit. I kind of lost myself, man. Not going to lie to y'all. I don't know what to talk about next. Actually, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. A lot of you guys who watch my streams are basketball fans, of course. A lot of y'all are football fans, too. And the other day, what, what day was it? Sunday? Sunday night. A lot of y'all Seahawks fans were upset, man. And I really don't blame y'all. I don't blame y'all. Sunday was a good day for the NFL, man. Of course, we saw an amazing play from the Cardinals, Kyler Murray, Hail Mary, to Hop. Why did the Texans let go of Hop, man? No wonder they fired Bill O'Brien. But yeah, the Bills are still looking good. It's crazy that the Seahawks are 6-3, and three, but they're third in their division. I mean, to be fair, everybody's tied, but you can't tell me that's not crazy. You would be lying if you said that wasn't crazy. You would be lying for sure if you said that wasn't crazy. That they're 6-3 and three and 3rd in their division. I mean, they're technically tied for 1st, but like, they're in 3rd. They're in 3rd right now. They're most certainly in 3rd. Also, you know who else is 6-3? and three? The Browns. The Browns are the weirdest 6-3 and three team, man. They won, what, like 10-7 to seven on Sunday? Are you kidding me? 10-7? That's crazy. 17 points combined. That is still more points than the Cowboys scored in the three weeks before they played against the Steelers. But like, 17 points combined. You scored 10 points, not even two touchdowns, and you still won. And that's not to mention the Browns have beaten the Bengals twice. I think they beat the Bengals by a combined, like, I want to say six points. It was definitely no more than 10. 
and beating the Bengals twice, barely. And the Bengals got whipped by the Steelers on Sunday. What do you guys think of the Bengals? What do you guys think of Joe Burrow? He's looking pretty good. Definitely not the best rookie QB. I would have to give that to Mr. Justin Herbert, but still pretty solid, man. You really can't complain. All right. We are 25% of the way there. All we got to do is win nine more games, and we are home. Yeah, I don't think it's even been 50 minutes yet. I don't have a timer up or anything, but I do have the timer on my computer. Well, not the timer, but I can see the time. 9.52 a.m. for anybody who's wondering. Let's see who we got next. Oh, got some sapphires in there. This could be a quit, which you love to see. It's crazy that you can put together a team with Pink Diamond Curry and Blake and LeBron, and it can be better than this team. That's pretty crazy. He might not quit immediately, but we can certainly try and make him quit. Like I was saying about the NFL, though, you guys know this pretty well. This is another question I get all the time on my streams. I might as well just do a Q&A video where I'm literally playing the game while reading your questions in front of me because I'm bringing up so many of the questions that you guys have answered before. So many of those questions. But my favorite team is the Falcons. Our record is 3-6. and six. And earlier, I was talking about how the Browns are 6-3, and three, but they've beaten the Bengals twice barely, and they won on Sunday 10-7. to seven. Like, that's so bad. That is so bad. And it's the opposite for the Falcons. They should have beaten the Cowboys. That's a game that should have gone their way. That's a game that should have gone their way. They also should have beaten the Bears. That game was looking like it was over. But what do you know? The Bears, not the Bears. Yeah, no, the Bears. They find a way to come back. Falcons find a way to lose. Another game they should have won was versus the Lions. They were in the lead with, like, how many seconds left? I can't remember, but they were about to win. They were literally less than a minute away from winning. It was the end of the game. They should have won that one, for sure. They lose that one, though. They leave time on the clock, and next thing you know, guess who comes back? The Lions. I mean, the Lions, you can't really complain. They're not a bad team. They're better than the record says, in my opinion. But, like, forget about that. If the Falcons win those three games, they're 6-3. and three. Of course, they wouldn't be at the top of their division, but they would be in a much better spot at 6-3. and three. They'd be in the playoffs right now if they were better than 6-3. and three. Or if they were 6-3. and three. Even if they were 5-4. and four. Let's say their record's 5-4. and four. Their season is still alive. And I mean, they have won back-to-back -back games. So it's not like their season's dead or anything. But, I mean, with all the teams in their division, there's I just don't think there's a way that they come back and make the playoffs. I'm pretty optimistic, man. You guys have heard me talk in the streams before. Whenever there's a player who you guys call a bust or something or a team that you guys call terrible, I always bring up points about why their future could be brighter, how they can turn around their season. But man, it's been bad. It's been bad. Not the easiest to be optimistic. Y'all know what I mean? But yeah, Falcons fan. And Matt Ryan hasn't had a bad season. Of course, the Falcons have had a few injuries, but like, at the end of the day, I feel like the Falcons should definitely be better than the record says. I feel like they are better than the record says. It's just that they should have won some of these games. Definitely should have won some of these games. Also, this guy's pretty good, I can tell. You guys are probably like, what? His team's not even good. I can tell by the way he plays defense. He did do settings before the game. I can tell this guy. He knows what he's doing, but... We're going to see if we can make him quit still. We're going to see if we can make him quit. You guys are probably like, that's so toxic, man. But I'm just trying to get through these games ASAP. Or as I say in my streams, ASAP as possible. The last guy, I wish he would have quit, for real. I wish he would have quit. Because that game, that game was a lost cause, man. He wasn't coming back in that one, for sure. He was definitely not coming back in that game. But yeah, enough about the NFL, man. Actually, no, we'll keep talking about the NFL. We'll keep talking about it. I was about to say, talking about the 
Falcons has got my spirit down a little bit. My spirit, my spirit's still fine though. We're playing well online. That's really the biggest factor for me. And I'm also a Titans fan. I guess that hasn't been as bad, but it has been kind of bad the last few weeks. And I'm not a bandwagon NFL fan. I promise. It's just the, the Titans are pretty close to where I live. Falcons are also pretty close. Never been to a Titans game, but I have been to a Falcons game. It was versus the Saints last year on Thanksgiving. They almost came back and won that thing, but they didn't, so there's that. Ah, I keep on sounding so negative, man. I got to stop. I got to stop with that. Y'all know in my streams, it's always chill vibes. This video, I want it to be chill vibes. I got to chill, man. Stop talking about the Falcons. What are your favorite teams, man? What are your favorite teams? I know we probably got a lot of Patriots fans. Their offense looked decent on Sunday, man. Back-to-back -back wins for the Patriots, man. That, it didn't catch me off guard. It kind of did, I'm not going to lie. I mean, versus the Ravens, I definitely thought the Ravens were going to win that one. But you know what? I've been wrong before. I'm cool with it. And I'm glad the Patriots gave the Ravens a fight, man. I'm glad the Patriots gave the Ravens a fight. Patriots, they're still in the playoff picture, too. Patriots are still in the playoff picture. And, of course, when you think of the Patriots, you think of Tom Brady. We also got some Buccaneers fans, probably. I know we got Patriots fans. I know we got Ravens fans. We got a lot of different fans, man, because you guys watch my channel from all around the country. The Ravens, they've been... I mean, they're still 6-3, and three, so it's not like their season's over. But, I mean, low-key, if they don't snap out of this funk, they could totally miss the playoffs, man. They could totally miss the playoffs. They're not going to. They won't. They're not going to actually miss the playoffs. But there's a... There's probably some alternate dimension out there where the Ravens don't make the playoffs, right? Maybe? I don't know, but... Maybe there is. Maybe there is a dimension out there where the Ravens actually missed the playoffs. It's so crazy because last year they were so unstoppable. And I feel like this year their defense hasn't even been terrible. I mean, they gave up 23 versus the Patriots, right? Like, that's not, that's not terrible. It's not terrible defense, but 17 points is pretty bad offense. It's not the worst offense in the world. It's definitely not as bad as the Cowboys. No offense to the Cowboys fans. You know we got some of those. But... Still pretty bad, no cap. No kizzy, as some of you guys say in the chat. That was so cringe. I'm sorry about that. Also, forgot to do this after the last game. I got to turn off shot aiming. Earlier in this game, I airballed a wide open mid range shot with LeBron because of aiming. So, let me turn that off. Man, I hope this guy quits. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If he doesn't, it ain't a big deal, but I hope he does. I really do hope he does. Another thing I brought up earlier, I know I'm jumping from subject to subject to subject, but it's been almost an hour now. Talking to nobody while listening to music, while playing the game for an hour straight, it's not the easiest thing in the world, so y'all forgive me if I'm jumping from topic to topic. Like, even earlier in the stream, me jumping from, like, trade trade like wasn't that smooth so y'all forgive me if my transitions between talking are very good we're on the current gen right now i brought the same thing up earlier we're on the current gen and you guys are probably wondering why i am playing the current gen earlier i was like i'm playing the current gen because i'm used to it and i think you guys can see i'm still pretty used to it it's pretty similar to the next gen but a lot of the gameplay things in the next gen are different. And that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. A lot of the cheesy things, like bump steals, like driving super hard baseline, is actually not in the game anymore, believe it or not. It's actually not in the game anymore. If you try to go baseline super hard, you're probably going to end up... If you try doing the same thing going baseline, I guess I can demonstrate it later. If you try doing that, you're probably going to shoot a mid-range pull-up in next-gen instead of lifting off from, like... Let me demonstrate. I think you guys know what I mean. Let's say I go baseline like this. In next-gen, that's a pull-up jump shot. 
falling out of bounds, you might hit the side of the backboard. But in current gen, that's a layup and or dunk animation. So that's an interesting thing. That means they kind of reduce the cheese, which is good. It's a very good thing. That's one thing I like about next gen already. There's also less bump steals. I feel like ball handling's a little more fluid. I feel like defense is a little bit better. A little bit better. It still feels kind of weird, but it's definitely a little bit better. Not noticeably, insanely better. But you can definitely see a difference. Like, I think you can definitely see a difference. Even though it's not super obvious, like I said, you can definitely see a difference. Those are two things I like about next gen. Two things I like about next gen. What else do I like about next gen? I mean, I like the triple threat courts. Both of them, online and offline. Small things, but cool things, you know? I mean, just little things like that. They show the 2K is at least paying a little bit of attention to stuff, at least trying to change stuff. But with that being said, those are pretty much the only things that changed in, return, in regards to Triple Threat. Of course, gameplay is not completely restructured. A lot of the same animations, a lot of the same things that happen in the current gen also happen in the next gen. Which is good and bad, because when it comes to a basketball simulation, you can only change so much. You can only change the graphics so much. And you guys are probably looking at this screen and saying, man, next gen looks just like it. Next gen is actually pretty noticeably better, but there are also signs of laziness. For example, a lot of the refs, for example, a lot of the people in the crowd, they do more or less look the exact same as they do in the current gen. Some of the assistant coaches in my career and all that stuff, they look more or less the same as well. 2K, they made some changes. They made changes to what they had to, but they definitely could have changed things up a little bit more than they did, you know? They still made good changes, which I'm very happy about, but, like, they definitely could have done more. With that being said, I like the next gen, but I feel like the next gen consoles were supposed to kind of blow us away, you know? That's the thing about it. Next generation. Like, you're supposed to take a step up from the Xbox One to the Series X. You're supposed to take a step up from the PlayStation 3 to the 4 to the 5. I feel like the Series X, the loading times are amazing, but it just doesn't take that huge next step like the PlayStation kind of does. You know? And it's not the Xbox's fault, because the console's great, the games are great, the specs are amazing, but like, no console exclusives to show off just how powerful this console really is. The loading times are great, I said that earlier, I'll say it again. I love the loading times, but like, 2K runs similarly to how it did on current gen, and I mean, I don't have Call of Duty, so I can't really compare that to like Modern Warfare and Black Ops. I haven't played Fortnite on next gen, probably not going to. I did download Avengers on next gen, I guess we'll see how that looks on next gen too. What I'm saying is, it doesn't run super differently than it does on current gen. Now 2K next gen is a lot of fun. And I've been telling you guys it's a lot of fun, because it is a lot of fun, but like, I feel like it could be better, you know? I feel like it could be a tad better, if you feel what I mean. If you know what I mean. Alright. Enough of the next gen commentary for one second. I'll get back to it in a second, but I feel like this should be an easy win. Y'all know we're 4-0 right now. This could be 5-0 with a win right here. We really did just hit 60 wins in Unlimited. You know, that's actually a pretty cool milestone, but it's really not that big of a deal. As long as we end this thing with, what, 68 wins? Since we need 8 more wins, I'll be happy. I'll be pretty happy as long as we can do that. Give me that. Ah, I should have stolen that. Should have stolen that. Back to what I was saying about the next gen, though. Some of the features they added are super dope. The city takes some getting used to. Takes a lot of getting used to. I mean, we knew in the trailer from what we saw. The city is massive. The city is humongous. And it takes a while to get from place to place, man. It takes a long time to get from place to place. Even on a skateboard. Which you do get for free, but like, you can pay for them too. Let me change things up a little bit. Once again, I forgot to change my options. I forgot to change aiming. 
Maybe I'll remember to do it after this game. I don't know. Maybe I'll remember after this game. Like I was saying, though, cool things about the next gen. Of course, it's great that affiliations are back. There was actually an event on... Was it yesterday? No, it was Sunday. Today's Tuesday. Sorry. My sense of days is kind of off right now. It's really off right now, actually. So maybe I'll get that going the more I play, the more I go on through today. I'll get my senses back, you know? But, yeah, there was a, I think there was a Beats event on Sunday. I played a couple games of it. Shout out to my guy, Ben. He joined my game. I didn't even notice him at first, but my boy, Ben Grinds. His real name is Ben Walker. Shout out to him. We played a couple games together. I was using my shooting guard. He was using his point guard. We were both just trying to get a feel for our builds. And it made me realize something. I don't think I've played with a single good center so far. In Rookieville, the park, anywhere in next gen so far. So it inspired me to make a big man. I do have some really good highlights with this small forward shooting guard I made, like I said earlier. I do have some pretty good highlights with him. I might or might not post those, but I was pretty good with them. I was hitting my shots, but it's so important to have a good center, a good power forward, a guy who can defend the paint, grab rebounds, do little things like that. Of course, in the park, we love spacing. We love spacing out the court. We love taking threes. I made a big man who's not much of a shooter, but man, the defensive badges and the, the, defensive badges and the finishing badges are pretty crazy. The speed's pretty good, too. Not too bad, man. Not too bad. Really can't complain. I don't know which build I'm going to use more, because both are going to be fun, but that's the next-gen scoop for anybody who was interested. I doubt it was any of you guys, but just for anybody who's interested, there's the next-gen scoop for you guys. Next-gen's cool. It is really cool, but that city does take some getting used to. My career, I've been playing it a surprisingly... Surprisingly high amount lately. I have not played much my team on next gen. If you pulled up my Xbox account and took a look at my achievements, you would see I have not played too much on the next gen. So many easy achievements that you can get just by playing the game. I still haven't unlocked. Literally, all I have to do to unlock those achievements is just play a little bit more. I've barely played any next gen my team, but I have been all over my career. I made it to the NBA with that big man build. I think I'm up to an 88 overall. And I'm definitely going to play some once I'm done with class today. Actually, I don't know because i got to take a nap. This is something else I talked about the other day. My sleep schedule is way off. So my class is at 12.30. I'm probably going to sleep at 2. And I'm probably going to wake up at like 7, maybe 7.30. I'll stream at like 8, 8.30, no later than 9. And after that, after the stream, I'll just be, what am I doing after that? I guess I'm going to get a run in, get some food. And since I'm waking up at like 8, that means I'll be able to function for a good 12, 13 hours after that. So I guess I'll go to the gym in the morning at 6 o'clock. I'll get some breakfast after that. On Wednesday, I only have, wait, I might or might not have two exams on Wednesday. I might actually have two exams on Wednesday now that I think about it. Me and my friend Mary Ann were talking about this. We might have two exams on Wednesday, or I might have two exams on Wednesday. We'll see. We'll see. If I have two exams, that really does throw off how my day is going to go. But if we don't have two exams, then I don't have class on Wednesday till 5, because the semester really is winding down. This semester really has gone by fast. No cap. Like... I think the reason why it feels like it's gone by so fast is because I just haven't been able to go home. Whenever I was about to go visit home every time this semester, something came up. Whether it was one of my family members getting sick or them visiting here instead of me going there. One time my car got a flat tire. Like, you can never predict what's going to happen. That's why I'm so excited for Thanksgiving break this next week. Sadly, I'm not going to be streaming during Thanksgiving break, but it's only one week, so I'll be back very soon after, and I will be back to streaming once again. I'm going to miss streaming because it's become such an integral part of my schedule. Like, I do it pretty much every day. Whenever I don't stream, I'm either posting a video, I'm planning out a stream, or I'm planning out a video. Like, yesterday, Monday, I didn't stream, but... 
I went ahead and planned out that I was going to do this today. And I'm going to stream tonight, on Tuesday night. I'm going to get some sleep after my class, like I said, but I will probably be streaming tonight. We should be getting new spotlights. I'm not sure when, but we should be getting new packs. And even if we don't get new spotlights with the packs, I can still title the stream new whatever packs. And then I can just play some triple threat or something. Show off the next gen triple threat. Because I've had a lot of fun playing next gen triple threat. I'm currently on a 60 game triple threat online winning streak in next gen. Which is crazy. Crazy. I know that might be because a lot of comp players may not have the Xbox Series X or whatever. But I still play versus some really good teams. So say what you want to. I feel like that 60 win streak is well deserved. Very well deserved. Because... Three on three triple threat online, it can get kind of clunky, man. It, it's not always easy to win that three on three triple threat online. It gets cheesy, it gets toxic. Oh, man. It gets toxic, but we somehow strung together 40 wins in a row in my stream on. Man, what day was it, man? All the days are running together. It was on Saturday, Sunday. It was on Sunday. But the day before that, I also streamed triple threat for the first time. And I ended that stream by winning 20 games in a row. So, even though I've gotten some error codes, even though it hasn't been 100% smooth, like, 60 wins in a row is what I'm trying to say here. It's fun. It's fun. I feel like in the next gen, there's not as much cheese. I feel like it's not as easy to exploit the game. And I feel like that's why I was getting those wins pretty consistently. I was getting those wins pretty nicely, man. I'm not going to... I don't want to toot my own horn, but I think I was doing a decent job with that. Pretty decent at best. So yeah, we're going to play some more next gen this week. If we do get new spotlight challenges, those might be next gen too. I might do those on next gen instead of current gen. But my team limited on Friday. I'm probably going to do that on... I probably will do that on current gen because I just feel more comfortable playing current gen. In current gen, guys see my team... And they'll immediately quit, man. No cap. They'll see my team and they'll say, oh, I have no chance. Next thing you know, easy win for me. This guy has not really given me an easy game so far, though. This guy's been... This guy's pretty good, I can tell. This guy's solid. He knows what he's doing. He has confidence. He knows that he has a chance to come back. I mean, that's why he hasn't quit yet, because he knows he has a chance, but... If I can get a few stops on defense in a row, if I can actually focus on the game instead of just sitting here and thinking about whatever, then we'll come back and win this. No, not, not come back. Come back's not the word. We'll get some stops and pull away, but he also has been getting kind of not lucky, but right there he hits a shot in my face. Earlier he dunked on Blake. But we get those three points right back right here, so let's see if we can make this guy quit. I think now I've been playing for about an hour. I mean, if we can get this guy to quit in the next five minutes, that means we're getting five wins in about an hour, which would be crazy. Five wins in one hour is a crazy pace. And even if I don't get all the wins, like, in two hours or whatever, my class doesn't start for another over two hours. So, like, I still have time. If we don't get this done in the next hour, I still have about another hour before class starts. I'm low-key supposed to go somewhere at 12.15 and then go to class at 12.30. But I think I can cancel my thing at 12.15 and do that another day. I think I can reschedule that, so I think I will. Just so I can give you guys this content, man. I mean, y'all know I'm all about giving y'all content. Okay, you know how I was talking about getting stops and pulling away? Let's see if we can do that now. It was just a 10-point game. Now it's up to a 17-point game. He's trying to drive in with Steph. For some reason, he's getting double teamed. And he almost got a wide open dunk off that. So let's see if we can go up by 20. Usually when you're playing online, there's a certain amount of points where you'll get to it and your opponent will then quit. I'm not sure what the amount of points is with this guy, but he knows what he's doing. So I think if this game gets up to like maybe 25, he'll quit. But until then, we just got to keep on playing well. He's not super hard to read, but he is getting a lot of easy buckets, so I can definitely do something about that, because he is getting way too many easy buckets. He knows what he's doing, but we have the much better team. We should pull away and win this thing. We can get shots like this every time. We've been scoring pretty much every time, so let me pull away a little bit. 
give LeBron a path to the bucket, and the finish is going to be something in a post. -game. Great defense. Jackson. Like I said, not super hard to read. He's not getting too many easy things on offense. Who's his center right now? I think it's Dino or Dino. And James with a clear path to All the right, there we go. And the shot goes down. Like I said, I don't know what the margin is for this guy to quit. It might be 25, it might be 30. He might not quit at all like the guy earlier who was trying to get his challenges done. He might not even quit, but our goal is to get quits. Our goal is to get this done ASAP as possible. Good defense. Yeah, at this point he's just chucking. We have a chance to go up big right here. Let's get it back to Blake. I'll take him baseline, see if we can dunk on him. I would love if he quit, but if he doesn't, like, it's not a big deal. Y'all know I enjoy talking to y'all, giving y'all content. But y'all are probably like Doc. Earlier, you were talking about such interesting things. You were talking about the NBA draft. You were talking about free agency a bit. Ever since then, you've been talking BS, man. You've been boring, so... Let me think of other things to talk about that aren't so boring. Just talked about current gen versus next gen. I mean, y'all know it's not easy sitting here talking to pretty much nobody. I mean, during the streams, I'm kind of doing the same thing. But there's a chat, so like, y'all have stuff to say. I have stuff to respond to. I mean, y'all do say y'all like my commentary. So I low-key just could sit here and totally commentate, but like... I don't know if that's as cool as talking about something that you guys can, like, respond to and have your opinion about, you know? So let me think of something. Maybe I did jump through those NBA trades earlier a little bit too fast. I was jumping from trade to trade, giving all my opinions at one time. And to be fair, the transitions between each of those opinions, pretty rusty, man, pretty rusty. I was jumping from topic to topic, not really lingering on each topic for too long. And you know what? Now that I think about it, there were some things that had to do with those those trade talks that kind of weird. So earlier I talked about how the Bucks traded their draft picks. If I'm not mistaken, the Bucks don't own their own first round draft pick until the year, I want to say it's 2025, maybe 2024. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. All I know is the Bucks, they basically traded away their future. And if they don't have a big year this year, they might lose their future in Giannis. What is the ceiling for the Bucks? Of course, I'm pretty sure it's an NBA championship. But, like, what if the Bucks make it to the Conference Finals and lose in seven to the Nets? Is that a successful season? I don't think it is. I feel like the Bucks feel like they gotta go to a championship, they gotta make some moves to bolster their bench, and there are a lot of free agents available for them to do that. I mean, earlier I was talking about the Lakers free agents, and just those guys, like Bradley, KCP, Rondo, I don't think Rondo's gonna happen anymore, because they picked up, what's, oh my gosh, Drew Holiday, they picked him up. So that minor might not happen anymore, of course they picked up Bogdan too. They've really run out of pieces to trade, so they are going to have to kind of rely on free agency a little bit. So I guess we'll see how that goes. But the Bucks, I feel like they got to at least make it to the championship. Let's say they make it to the finals and lose to the Lakers in six. I feel like that is a season where Giannis can look at it and say, you know what? We can come back next year and win the championship for sure. I can see that. I can definitely see that. Giannis will look at that and say, we can work with this. Lakers are a great team. They just went back-to-back. -back. We can definitely come back next year. And maybe we'll play versus someone else. Maybe we'll be better for the Lakers, too. I don't know. We'll have to see about that. I think the Bucks got to at least make it to the finals. Because you can argue that both of these last two years, they should have made it to the finals. Back in 2018, when they played the when they played the Raptors, two nothing series lead, two nothing series lead. Mike Budenholzer, he just couldn't get around the Raptors game plan to stop Giannis though. Couldn't get around it, and that's why the Bucks didn't win a game for the rest of the series. They could have won a couple games for sure. It's not like the next two games in Toronto were insane blowouts, but like it's interesting because. 
If the Bucks win that series, let's be real, they probably do win the NBA championship because, I mean, let's be real, that Warriors team was banged up. Of course that Warriors team was still competent. Of course Clay wasn't full strength. Of course KD only played, what, one quarter for real? But at the end of the day, I feel like that Bucks team, if they had just won two of the next five games versus that Raptors team, instead of losing four out of four, they could have won the championship. Could have. I don't know if they would have, but they definitely could have. We can talk about could all day, but we'll see what the Bucks do this year for sure. But like I said, I feel like winning that championship, or at least making it there, is super important for their future, especially Giannis' future. I feel like these are the moves that the Bucks need to, you know, prevent Giannis from being wooed to a team like the Heat or the Warriors. And I do feel like these trades they made for Holiday and Bogdanovich, I feel like they do give the Bucks a better chance of having Giannis re-sign, sign that extension, and continue his time with the Bucks. That's what I feel like, but it doesn't matter what I feel, it matters what Giannis feels, so... We'll see how Giannis is doing in these next few days, next few weeks. We'll see what he thinks of the Bucks situation. And, I mean, no matter what, this team with Drew, with Middleton, with Giannis, with Brooke Lopez popping threes, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But they did pretty much trade away their entire future. But no matter what, like I said, I don't think it really matters that they traded away their future. Because at least they made trades. If the Bucks lose Giannis next offseason because he's like, y'all didn't do enough, that sucks. But the Bucks actually made some moves. They showed Giannis they want to win now. Giannis made the request, and the Bucks said, ask and you shall receive. That's what my dad always used to say. Ask and you shall receive. Giannis asked for help. He got some help. Drew Holiday might not be on Damian Lillard's level in terms of like offense. He might not be on Curry or Lillard's level. Even though Drew Holiday did give Lillard a run for his money back in, was it 2018 or was it 2017? It was 2017 when the Pelicans beat the Trailblazers in the first round. He's went head-to-head -head versus Lillard in the playoffs before. He can hang with him, but he's just not on the same level as someone like Lillard or Curry. But, like, he's the perfect player because he doesn't need the ball to be effective. And, yeah, this is something I didn't mention earlier with Drew Holiday. I did not mention this earlier. Drew Holiday, you can go to him for a bucket every single time down the court. He can pull up. He can shoot mid-ranges. He can create shots off the dribble for himself and for others. But you can also stick him on the other team's best perimeter player. So if the Nets and the Bucks do play in the conference finals, not only can Drew go get himself a bucket, he can also guard Kyrie. He can also guard Kyrie. And that's huge, because there are a lot of good perimeter players out in the East. So you got Drew now, who can guard someone like Kemba Walker. He can guard someone like Kyle Lowry, too. He can guard a lot of different guys, man. A lot of different guys. So that's a big pickup for the Bucks. I know they lost all those picks. I know they don't own their draft pick until 2025, which means if they do lose Giannis, they're not going to have, they're not going to be in great position to draft a replacement for Giannis. But to be fair, how often does a player like Giannis come around? How often do we see a player like Giannis in the draft? Not very often. Even if the, actually, since I don't think the Nets are going to get James Harden, I got the Bucks as my early pick to win the East. That's another question you guys have been asking me in the streams. You guys have been asking me a lot of questions. I've been giving y'all answers. But a lot of these questions, such as this one about Giannis or about the Eastern Conference, I'm usually like, we're going to have to see. But no matter what draft picks the Bucks make this year, I mean, they have their starting five set in stone. They just got to bolster out that bench because earlier I was talking about how important the bench is. The Bucks, they still have Kyle Korver, they still have Brooke Lopez, they still have role players, but I feel like Ilyasova was a guy, I feel like they, I mean, he's not a super integral piece, but his ability to space the floor, his ability to shoot, also play some defense, do little things like that, the Bucks might miss that a little bit, they might miss that a little bit, George Hill, 
you can argue that in the playoffs for the last two seasons, George Hill has been the Bucks' best point guard and possibly their second or third best player overall behind Giannis and Chris. Like, you can argue that. Just go look at the stats. It's not all about stats. It's also about energy. And George Hill brought energy in the playoffs. It's hard to guard. He was really good at shooting the three the last few seasons. Remember when George Hill had that one random season in Utah where he led the team in scoring? I'm not sure if any of you guys remember that, but yeah, he averaged like 21 year. Then he signed with the Kings and he went back down to like 10 points per game. And then he got traded to the Cavs that same year and he missed that free throw in the finals that would have given them the win. Oh man, negative vibes again, bad vibes again. Earlier I had bad vibes talking about the Falcons, now I got bad vibes. Ah, gotta get those out of my head, man. But y'all get what I mean. George Hill's solid. George Hill's a solid player. Good pickup for the Pelicans. And I'm a, I'm a Lonzo Ball fan. My younger brother Jonas, shout out to Jonas. I've shouted out a few individuals in this video. You guys are pretty dope, every single one of y'all I've mentioned so far. And even the ones I haven't mentioned, y'all are dope too. But like I was saying, Jonas is a big Lonzo Ball fan. And it's kind of weird, it kind of sucks that the Pelicans traded for two point guards. Because that probably will affect Lonzo's playing time if, if they do keep both of those guards. Because there is a great chance that Eric Bledsoe, you know, requests a trade. There's a chance that they cut Bledsoe. I mean... You never know. You seriously never know. Maybe Bledsoe wants to play for a contender. Maybe he wants to just play overseas. I don't even know, man. You seriously never know. But what I'm saying is, I think those guys are good leadership. I think those guys are good veterans that Lonzo can learn from. And I feel like that's what Lonzo needs to develop. And you know what? Since we're talking about Lonzo, let's talk about the Pelicans, man. They got all these draft picks stockpiled. Shout out to David Griffin. Former Cavaliers GM. Back when LeBron played there. I know people call LeBron the GM. But David Griffin was the real orchestrator there, man. So shout out David Griffin. Yeah, he's the guy in New Orleans now. So he's the one making moves. He's the one stockpiling draft picks. He's the one who is just orchestrating everything in the background. The Pelicans have a bright future not only because they got stars. Not only because they're making good trades, but also because, I mean, they just have so many picks lined up in the future. And there's no way they mess up on all these picks. And I'm pretty sure some of these picks they got are pick swaps. So what if the Bucks lose Giannis and they're really bad next year? They just got some pick swaps from the Bucks, so if the Bucks end up being really bad. Let's say the Pelicans make the playoffs next year, but the Bucks are really bad. Or the year after this next year. So the Bucks, they're not going to miss the playoffs this year. They're not going to be bad. Let's say the Bucks are terrible in the 2022 season. And since there's a pick swap there with the Pelicans, the Pelicans get a high draft pick. You never know. That could happen. That could certainly happen. If I had to bet my money, I think that Giannis is going to stay. But what if? This is a big possibility, man. Huge possibility. Man, a compo. A compo, a compo, a compo. NBA is interesting right now, man. Like I said, for y'all, today's the NBA draft. For me, recording this video, tomorrow's the draft. I'm excited, man. I'm super excited. Like, I know people might think this draft is top heavy. Like, the top three picks are just really good, and then there's a drop off after that. But then you look a little bit closer, and it's really not like that. I mean,. There are guys who are like picks 13 to 18. There are some guys at the end of the first round who could end up being really good. Like, you seriously never know. Guys like Josh Green could be good. Guys like Cole Anthony could be solid. I mean, who knows about RJ Hampton? The Celtics might snatch him up. Shout out to the Celtics. Like, you seriously, we don't know what's going to happen in this draft, man. We really don't. I think a lot of guys were forgetting that Mac McClung's technically in the draft, too. You know who else is in this draft? Cassius Stanley. There was one mock draft I saw that had the Knicks selecting Cassius Stanley. I swore he was back at Duke, but since I hadn't heard much NBA draft news about him, I guess he's back in the draft, so... That's pretty dope. I mean, he's an athlete, a defender, not the best shooter in the world. I remember the first time I ever heard about Cassius Stanley was back when he played versus Jesser one-on-one -on, -one on his channel. Shout out to Jesser. 
Let's dribble the ball out, man. Let's hold the ball. Let the clock run out. Take some dumb shot from half court. And that's going to be a wrap. 5-0. and oh. Man, that game went by slowly. I was up big early, but he just didn't want to quit. Which I got to give him respect for because, I mean, in theory, I say this all the time. You always have a chance to come back. You always have a chance. Last week in the diamond tier. No, the pink diamond tier. I was lagging really bad, and because of that, I was down by like 25 in the first half. But I knew, since the guy I was playing versus wasn't very good, I knew that if I just stay and the lag gets better by the second half, I knew I could come back. And I came back and won by double digits, too. Like, the guy wasn't trash. He had a good team. But, like, you can tell early in the game by the way someone plays, by their offensive strategies, First of all, you can tell whether or not they're a tryhard. Second of all, you can tell how how much of a pain they're going to be to guard, basically. You can tell how much of a pain they're going to be. Coach settings. All right, so we're almost halfway there. We're almost halfway there. We need 12-0. and 0. Man, I haven't gone 12-0 and 0 yet this year. But I will say this. I went 10-0 and 0 in the diamond tier. I went 11-0 and 0 in the pink diamond tier. And I'm 5-0 and 0 right now. So we are technically on a what? 26 game winning streak, 26 and 0 in our last 26 games. That's pretty cool. And I played versus this guy earlier. I played versus this guy earlier. Does this mean he's gonna quit? Or is he gonna play the entire game? Because I don't remember him having Duncan Robinson in the lineup. So I don't think he's gonna quit, even though we played this guy earlier. I think this might be another game where we have to play the entire game. Oh, man. But hey, we did beat this guy earlier, so whether he quits or not, this should be 6-0. and oh. What was I talking about, though? What was I talking about? Can't remember. I was definitely talking about something before I went. I was talking about my nice little online winning streak. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Even though I haven't gone 12-0 yet this year, Things are looking pretty good right now. If I don't go 12-0, you guys probably aren't even going to see this video. This is probably going to be all for nothing, but like, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. Let's just get a nice early lead. Maybe I can make this guy quit. Maybe there's a world in which this guy does quit. He has Duncan Robinson out there. Isaiah Thomas out there. Michael Jordan out there. Like, we can definitely get the dub again and I think we can definitely make this guy quit too he's got to get assists with Duncan Robinson so notice how right there he passes it and immediately shoots it with Kevin Garnett I knew he was gonna do that because I'm pretty sure that Duncan Robinson needs assists but if I can play some good defense and keep this guy scoreless for a little while maybe I can make him quit maybe is he quitting he's not gonna quit I don't think not that fast he's doing settings now he did settings earlier too, so yeah, we're going to have to really maybe get in his head a bit. I don't love saying that because I'm not a toxic player, I don't think. I don't zigzag and abuse screens. I don't hide behind screens. I barely even play off-ball defense. I mean, when I say barely play off-ball defense, what I'm saying is that you can't guard the ball handler all the time. The point guard or whoever has the ball on the other team, you can't always guard them. So if they blow past you, you got to switch to somebody else to play help defense, which is technically off-ball defense. Technically off-ball defense. But it's really not because that's just basketball rules. If you don't play help defense and rotate over, then they're going to get a wide open layup or dunk. So that's my opinion on that. Y'all say what you want to. I feel like off-ball defense is necessary sometimes, but when guys literally just sit in the paint, that's when it gets kind of annoying to me. That's when it gets annoying. When they just sit in the paint. You usually see that more in triple threat online. When you're playing like unlimited, you don't see it as much. Like for example, this guy can't really sit in the paint because I have a bunch of guys who can shoot. Like right here, Blake's gonna knock down this shot. Like, if you have a lot of guys who can shoot, you can't really paint sit, you know? So, if I can play some good defense this game, if I can possibly defer this guy from getting assists, then maybe he will quit because he played against me earlier. He played against me earlier, and now he's playing against me again. 
I would love to play versus this guy every time, but of course that's unrealistic. I mean, I guess if you wanted to, you could hit up one of your friends and possibly match up with them if you get the timing right on the menu screen, but now nah, that just I think that's going to take too much time. And I think there's just too many guys playing unlimited, especially at this time, even though I'm matching up with the same guy twice. So maybe there really aren't that many guys playing, but you guys get what I mean? I just feel like that's time consuming. Just go out and win the games yourself. Get those dubs yourself, man. No need to get one of your friends to carry you through these dubs. No need for that. It's kind of like getting challenges done in Triple Threat Online. Yeah, you could message the guy and ask him to help you get the challenges done, but like, if you can do them yourself, why even message the guy? I mean, to be fair, messaging the guy is a very good idea. If any of you guys do that, that's the right thing. That's a smart idea. It's just that, I mean, if I did that on stream, that just wouldn't be great for content, I don't think. I'm not sure how much you guys would enjoy watching the guy intentionally let me get a bunch of rebounds and stuff intentionally like play bad defense that just wouldn't be super fun to watch and i think just giving you guys the gameplay is the most important thing i think that is certainly the most important thing speaking of gameplay let's keep on pulling away so glad i fixed up my settings man so glad i remembered that so far also, I'm going to give another shout out real quick. I 100% doubt he's watching this video. Shout out to my boy Huday All Day. He's a moderator for my channel. And this guy, his team logo is the Bengals alternate logo. The, the Cincinnati Bengals. And this guy's also wearing those orange and white jerseys. So, shout out to the Bengals, Huday's favorite team. Man, Andy Dalton had a good run with the Bengals, man, but now it's Joe Burrow's squad. That's Joe Burrow's squad now. And they've actually done better this year than they've done in years, which is hilarious. I mean, it's hilarious, but it's kind of sad. It's sad seeing these NFL teams just do so bad year after year. Lately, that team has been what has been the Bengals, so I don't know why. I don't know where I was going with that, but it's good seeing Joe Burrow actually be good for them because with the NFL draft, it's so weird. Everyone knows that the Jets are going to want Trevor Lawrence, and everyone knew the Bengals, if they finished last, were going to want Joe Burrow. So everyone was saying, oh my God, the Bengals are going to ruin Joe Burrow's career. But he has shown this year that, you know, even though the Bengals were projected to be terrible, he's actually given them some life which is great. It's pretty dope. So, is it going to be the same for Trevor Lawrence? Because he's been a beast in college. He's not perfect. He throws picks every now and then. He makes mistakes. But, like, what I'm trying to say here is that all these quarterbacks who are supposed to come out of college and really affect the game, these are guys who scouts and analysts and people who talk about the NFL, they want good teams to draft. Nobody wants the Jets to draft Trevor Lawrence because they think the Jets is going to ruin Trevor Lawrence. But like, if Trevor Lawrence is really that good, if he's really worth that number one pick, I feel like he's going to be all right. I feel like Trevor Lawrence is going to get through it, you know? If I do talk about school, it'll be for like college football or something. I know we have a lot of college football fans who watch my channel. Once again, shout out to Puff. I talked about Puff earlier with the Hornets. He has really stuck with South Carolina, man. I know he's happy they fired their coach. It's been a weird year for football, man. I mean, to be fair, it's been a weird year for everybody. It's been a weird year for the entire world. Like, so of course it was going to be a weird year for college football, too. I mean, first of all, a bunch of the conferences are starting at different times, which is super weird. And teams like LSU, teams like Oklahoma, who were supposed to be heavyweights this year, beasts, amazing. Those teams, man, LSU stumbled out of the gate, losing two games. I make fun of Auburn sometimes, make fun of Bo Nix, their quarterback. I call him Bo Picks. He was looking like Aaron Rodgers versus LSU a couple weeks ago. Man. And then LSU didn't even show up to play versus Alabama this weekend. Imagine that. So, yeah, weird year for college football. The Sooners, they were supposed to be solid, too. Oklahoma. 
Baker Mayfield, Jalen Hurts, so many Heisman QBs. Next thing you know, they pick up Rattler, who's supposed to be the next Heisman QB. And then Oklahoma takes two L's to start the season. Imagine that. Imagine that. Like I said, it's been a weird year. But it's not just because of stuff like that. It's also because, I mean, Trevor Lawrence got the virus. He had to sit out one week. He had to sit out one week. And they almost won that game without him. I talked about Trevor Lawrence earlier. If you don't know who that is, he's the starting quarterback for the Clemson Tigers. Clemson Tigers. How many national championships have they won? Is it one or two? I know they beat Alabama once. They also lost to Alabama once. So I think they've won one championship. I could be wrong. And if I'm not mistaken, since I do have a not the best memory with this stuff, I'm pretty sure they played this last year versus LSU. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. Talked about him earlier, too. And Joe Burrow caught the dub pretty easily, matter of fact. So there's your college football scoop. LSU is playing like trash. I mean, a lot of the SEC teams aren't playing very well. LSU. Oklahoma's not SEC, but since they were supposed to be so good, that's why I'm bringing them up again. Auburn, they were, they were ranked high beginning of the season, man. I think Auburn always has high expectations, but yeah, it wasn't looking very good for Auburn. I mean, they lost two games early as well. They did hand LSU, man, they handed LSU a big L, I'm not going to lie. That game versus LSU, like I said earlier, I'm an Alabama fan. Did I say that earlier? If I didn't, I'm an Alabama fan. You guys always ask me that question too. Favorite team is the Crimson Tide. I'm from Alabama, so I promise y'all I'm not a bandwagon since they have had a pretty good decade for football, and I think they can win it again this year. I think Alabama's looking great. Mac Jones is looking like a beast. Shout out to my boy Josh Sipiel. I doubt he's watching this because we've been going for almost two hours now. But me and him went to the A-Day together. Me, him, Jeff, Daniel, shout out to those guys. We all went to A-Day together back in 2018 on Alabama's campus. And Mac Jones was playing like a beast. Tua was injured, so Tua didn't play. It was Jalen Hurts as the quarterback for one team, Mac Jones as the quarterback for the other. And Mac Jones was really handing it to Jalen, man. Or I guess he was handing it to the defense. Mac Jones was playing like a beast. Like, he was throwing some deep balls. He was making nice passes, making nice reads. I knew that he was going to be a good QB. I didn't think he'd be playing like this year. I thought they would have picked up another, you know, high-recruited quarterback. Maybe Tua would have stayed one more year. I'm not sure, but he's playing like a beast this year. I'm glad that he got the opportunity. I'm glad he got the start because he had so much talent that one game we saw in Tuscaloosa at A-Day. Like, it's cool that he's getting his opportunity, especially since, I mean, if you're a third-string quarterback behind Jalen and Tua, there's no guarantee that you're ever going to get an opportunity. And he finishes nicely. There's no guarantee you're ever going to get an opportunity. No matter how good you are, no matter how talented you may be, there's no guarantee you're ever going to get an opportunity. So it's dope seeing Mac Jones go off. Really dope. Mac Jones, man. Alabama's looking great this year, like I said. They are looking great. Of the step back three. Of course, they were great with Tua. They were revolutionary with Tua at the helm. And of course, they won a national championship with Jalen leading the team the entire season. Being an Alabama fan is pretty easy, man. I'm not going to lie. Being an Alabama fan is a lot easier than being a Knicks fan. It's a lot easier than being a Falcons fan. And I haven't talked about baseball yet, but it is damn sure a lot easier than being a Braves fan. Oh, those Braves. The Braves. The Braves. 3-1 lead, man. 3-1 lead versus the team that would go on to win the whole thing. I was going to say win the whole thing easily, but it really wasn't easily. The Dodgers had to grind out versus Tampa Bay to win that championship. But hey, they won it in six earlier 
I think I mentioned Jonas. Shout out to Jonas once again. Yeah, he's a Lakers fan. He's also a Dodgers fan. So it was a good year for him. So many years, so many times. The Dodgers fell short in the playoffs on the biggest stage in the biggest games. Next thing you know, the Dodgers come out and win the World Series this year. You love to see that. Lakers won it too. I know a lot of haters out there call it a Mickey Mouse ring. But come on. Lakers deserve that ring. Everyone's on the same playing field in the bubble. Everyone had equal opportunity to prepare. If you didn't prepare, that's your problem. I wish this guy would quit. I'm surprised he didn't send me a rage message. Nah, no new messages. I could message him, but I also give him, I give him respect for not quitting. And I mean, playing a full game, it takes no longer than 30 minutes. We're gonna hold the ball a bit this quarter. Of course, if I wanted to, I could score like a thousand points, but we're just gonna hold the ball, share the sugar a bit, let the clock run out, make sure the clock doesn't stop, and I might take some dumb shots as a result of that, but our shots have been falling this video, man. In every game, we've been playing pretty well. And I was thinking this might happen. I'm surprised it actually did. But we're playing versus this guy who we played versus earlier. And I'm not sure how common it is to play versus somebody twice, but you guys are witnessing it happen. You guys witnessed. We're just going to hold the ball, take some dumb shots like this. If we get the rebound, that's cool. If he scores, that's cool. I'm just trying to keep the clock running so we can get through this game. ASAP. ASAP as possible. That's what we're up to right now. That's what's on the menu right now. If we play versus this guy again, that's cool because it will be a win. But the first two or three games, I think it was the first two, were such quick rage quits that like, I would love for that to happen again just because my class time is getting closer and closer. But like I said earlier, I can also just log into my Zoom in between games or something, in between quarters, pull up my lecture. When my professor asks for attendance, I'll say here, and then I'll just turn off my microphone and we'll go from there. All I gotta do is hope that it doesn't turn back on somehow during the lecture. But my professor really isn't like that. I mean, usually I do sit there and do nothing the entire class, and he never turns on my microphone. So if he turns on my microphone, that's tough. But if not, good. I think this guy knows the strategy I'm going for. He's trying to rush me a bit. But I always see the open man. I'm trying to hold the ball till the very last second of the shot clock, but he's just not letting me do that. He is not letting me do that, so whoever he leaves open, I guess I'll just go ahead and shoot with him. It's really not that big of a deal. Less than three minutes left, and if the clock runs for the rest of this game, then it's going to be, it's not even going to be 11 o'clock. It's not even going to be two hours, and we're already going to be halfway done. But I would love to get some quick quits in there. That's alliteration right there. QQ, quick quits. And you know what? Since it is about 11, that means my boy EGR. Shout out to my boy EGR. If you're a moderator, if you come to my streams often, you've probably seen him. He runs a super dope My Team account on Instagram. He's probably already posted the new content we're getting today. Today being Tuesday. So I can definitely check that out, like right now, if I wanted to. But. I guess we could also take a look at it live, like while I'm doing this. But I'm streaming tonight too, so we're going to get a look at it tonight. And you guys, I mean, y'all have time to do whatever you want to, so y'all can just take a look at it right now if you really wanted to. Well, then again, you're seeing this on Wednesday. I'm saying that you guys can look at it now as in, like, actually on Tuesday. Because I'm pretty sure the content's already leaked. It's probably already come out. I'm pretty sure new content drops at like 10.30 my time. That's when Limited actually goes live at least. So I'm assuming it's 10.30. I could totally be wrong about that. I really don't know. But all I know is that if we get through this game, we're 6-0. and Hopefully we don't get some BS to go against us. Let's just get through this game. Let's get the dub. He's not messaging me, so I don't think he's that mad. I think he might have just put down his control. No, he didn't. He's just sitting there chilling, and now the clock continues to run. So, we're just going to do the same old thing. We're just going to run out the clock. 
We're going to run out the clock indeed. He's intentionally fouling. Are you serious? To be fair, he is subbing in his bench, but I'm just trying to hold the... Are you serious? Come on, man. There, my mic's not on. There's no way he actually hears what I'm saying. There's no need to do that, man. Fouling, that's just... That's cruel. There's no need to do that. But yeah, I don't think this game's going to be over by 11. I mean, it's 11 or 10.59. And there's over a minute left, so I don't think it's going to happen, sadly. But hey, that's still six games done in less than two hours. If this video ends up being four hours, I really don't think that's too bad of a length. I really don't. I don't think that's too bad at all. So, yeah, we'll see if we can get the next few games done faster. I would love to get some rage quits. We have not gotten many of those. Yeah, this guy, I can tell I respect the strategy because... I know what he's trying to do. He didn't quit. He's probably pretty frustrated with me. I'm not going to sit here and act like I wasn't toxic this game, getting inbound steals and stuff. He's probably just trying to make this game as long as possible for me, to inconvenience me a little bit, which I understand for sure. I, I definitely understand that. I mean, you don't want to just give the guy the easy win. So I'm going to go ahead and take this because I don't want him to foul me. If he fouls me, we have to waste even more time. I'm just trying to get through these games fast. Just trying to get through these games ASAP as possible, but yeah, he's fouling, and we can just run out the rest of the clock. Shot clock's turned off, so if we get the ball back, we can just run things out. I knew he was going to shoot a hook shot. Hopefully, he does not foul. We can sit here in the backcourt for eight seconds, so I can tell if he's going to foul. I got to pass the ball at the five-second mark, though. Yeah, there's the foul. I knew it. I was literally pulling up the icons, getting ready to pass. He knows I'm trying to run out the clock, so let's just get this game over with. Like I said, it's been less than two hours, if I'm not mistaken, so... Let's just run out the clock. Let's get this W. That should be 6-0. and oh. There we go. We've been playing well, man. We've been playing real well. I really enjoy this lineup I'm using. And you don't get mashed up with sweats too often. It does happen. And it has happened in my last 20, 30 or so games. But if you fight hard enough, you're going to get the dub. I really haven't had to fight. I haven't had to lock in super hard. Which is why there's barely been any silence. In the intro to this video, I said there's probably going to be a lot of silence because I'm just going to run out of things to talk about. And I'm going to have to really focus too. But I'm assuming we're going to get at least one or two challenges in the next few games. We haven't had to yet. But either way, I mean, even when you match up versus some really good teams, like this one for example, you will still get some quits every now and then. Now this is an interesting team. You have the four pink diamonds with John Wall, T Mac. Those are guys. Those guys are good. But Bob Love, I'm not super worried about him. I'm definitely not worried about Moses Malone, and I'm most certainly not worried about Amethyst Shaq. His team is a 91 though, so he probably does have some guys off his bench. But I look at this team, and I'm not sure whether or not he's trying to get challenges done. If he's not, and he's just a normal player, I think we can get through this game pretty nicely pretty easily but that John Wall is definitely hard to stop he's definitely hard to stop he's playing on ball defense though which is super impressive it does say a lot about you if you play on ball defense so shout out to anybody watching this who plays that on ball defense because it is not easy it is certainly not easy playing on ball defense because 2k this is an analogy a lot of guys like to make Sometimes playing defense is like running on ice, is what they like to say. It's like you're watching Disney on ice. Who's ever been to Disney on ice, man? I know I have, as Blake Griffin gets dunked on. Let's get this game going, bro. We've had like two opportunities on offense. We've turned it over twice. Let's get something going. Maybe we pull away early, get some stops. We can make this guy quit. Yeah, he's running Hail Marys, man. He's running Hail Marys. Almost took a very bad shot right there. Instead, turned it over. Let's get something going, man. Let's go at Moses Malone. Let's... Wow. I think that got blocked by John Wall. This is a sloppy game so far, bro. Sloppy game so far. 
I've turned it over and gotten blocked multiple times. Let me focus. Or maybe let me get back in my element and talk to y'all, because I was doing just fine when I was talking to y'all. I think ever since I've run out of things to talk about, I haven't been as good. But with that being said, like literally, if I just think for a half second, there's always things to talk about. Earlier I was talking about so much NBA stuff. Like what happened to that? There's still so much to talk about. There's probably so many thoughts that I began, and probably so many things that I began to say, but I just stopped. Like, there's probably so many more things I can still touch on, that I just didn't touch on. I don't know, man. I don't know. I know I talked about the Pelicans earlier. I talked about David Griffin, and I talked about all their draft picks and stuff. I didn't really talk about the talent they have right now, though. Because that talent's pretty good. I didn't talk about Ingram. Well, I, I mentioned him, but I didn't, like, go crazy, go in-depth talking about him. Really? Out of bounds? This guy's getting a lot of stuff going his way. But like I was saying, they, I mean, Lonzo's solid. I know I talked about him. Josh Hart's also solid. I think he can be something good. I mean, Pelicans have some real talent, and that's not to mention the Zion Williamson. Everyone likes to raise him on a pedestal, but it's well-deserved. It's really well-deserved, because he's going to be a beast. Another question, I know, I, I've been resorting to this a lot. You guys ask me this question a lot on the streams. Who's better, Ja Moran or Zion? I got to go Zion, man. I got to say Zion's the better player. But, with that being said, I will say that Ja Morant, 100%, without a doubt, deserved rookie of the year literally without any doubt i mean of course i think zion's the better player but i mean when you play like how many games do you play like 20 total maybe even including the bubble or was that not including the bubble i can't remember but when you play 20 games you shouldn't be in the running no matter how well you play and i bring this up all the time whenever you guys ask that question about zion or john morant but there was that one year where Joel Embiid, he had a really good rookie season, but like, I mean, he only played 30-something games. I don't even think it was more than 35. He played like 30 games. And, I mean, even though he put up easily the best stats, since the other two finalists were Malcolm Brogdon, who I think averaged like 12, maybe, and Dario Saric, who was also on the 76ers, the rookie of the year ended up being Malcolm Brogdon, so... I mean, Embiid, of course, we all know Embiid's better than Malcolm Brogdon, but like, for Rookie of the Year, when you only play 30 games, you gotta take that into account versus a guy who plays all 82. I can't remember if Malcolm did play all 82, but it's just, y'all get what I mean, hopefully. Hopefully y'all get where I'm coming from. Longevity, consistency, playing through all these games is pretty important. It is, it's very important, actually. Not just pretty important, it's very important. Something else that's important is getting hot versus this dude, because I feel like if I can get hot, I can definitely make this guy quit. I can also play some off-ball like I am right now. He's got John Wall, he's got Team Mac, but he's also got Moses Malone at the four, which makes no sense to be honest with you. So I can definitely force some turnovers, force him to drive and... Maybe even kick out some of these guys who can't really shoot. But for now, I guess we're just going to keep on getting dunked on for like the third or fourth time this game. Man, yeah, I got to be better for sure. At least we're scoring just fine. The first two minutes of this game were, ugh, those were sloppy. Turnovers, blocks, yeah, that was sloppy. But whenever we're tied at the end of the first quarter, I'm cool with it. Because my mentality is if we're tied... I can definitely be doing better. Like, we're scoring just fine. We just got to tighten up on defense. Got to be a little more efficient. But if we're down a tiny bit, I'm like, okay, I just got to get some shots to fall or something. Got to be a little bit better on both ends. But if you're tied, honestly, you're in a good position. We're getting buckets every time down the court. If we can make this, that would be great. That was that would have been cheesy, but if you're if you're up by one, you're in a good spot. Especially since I recognize that my defense that quarter was fun. My, my defense was terrible. He barely even took any jump shots. I was just playing some bad defense on his drive. So also he's been doing this the entire game. So 
If I can steal some of those, that would be awesome. But, of course, it's been one of those games where I just got to be better. Right there, I knew we wanted to go baseline. So, let's see if we can get something going. Because I know exactly what he wants to do. I know everything he wants to do. I just got to get there to prevent it. That was bad defense. That was a good kick out. He's been driving in and not passing that so many times, so I thought he would do the same thing right there. I was wrong. It's okay to be wrong. Oh my gosh, we're getting blocked so often. Way too often, actually. Once again, he kicks out. He's got a good bench. He's got a pretty solid bench. And once again, we get baptized again. He's just driving in, getting these posters, bro. Like, but to be fair, this is something else I say. Getting those posters is not sustainable. That's not going to work every single time down the court. But coming down, getting open shots, that's going to work every time. That is sustainable. But right there, he goes for the poster, but he gets the layup animation. That's not sustainable. That is not sustainable. Relying on me to throw dumb turnovers and get bad animations on layups so he blocks me, that's not sustainable. So you got to work to get better shots like that. But for some reason, LaMarcus couldn't move. I always have excuses, man. I always have excuses. Let me actually lock in and play better instead of making excuses. When 2K cheats you, it's easy to make excuses. But what if 2K is not cheating you? What if you just got to play better? I think that's what I got to do right now. Play better. That's pretty dumb though right there. Dumb stuff happens, but we haven't had any trouble scoring. So if we can keep on scoring, we're good. I could have popped that three with Curry. This guy's giving me problems, man. I'm not going to lie, but we're going to be all right. Okay, like right there, I got to steal that. That's just bad defense on my part. But I feel like that's like the second or third time I had a great opportunity to steal that but didn't. Like I said earlier, not sustainable. That is sustainable, though, getting nice layups in transition. This guy's killing me with Donovan Mitchell. I think that gives us a decent opportunity to talk about the Jazz. Man. Jazz, I wonder how they would have matched up with the Clippers in the second round, but of course, we didn't have the chance to see because, oh, I'm lagging. We didn't have the chance to see because those Nuggets were 3-1 comeback machines, so we never had the chance to see how good they'd be. Let's get Bo Diaw in there, give Blake a little rest. That, whoa, 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 oh no, don't tell me I'm lagging. Don't tell me I'm lagging bad. If I'm lagging bad, that might be some bad news. If I'm lagging, that's not good news. I thought that was a nice open shot. My icons are coming up just fine, but if I'm lagging, that is some bad news. Even though we have the better team, even though we're playing good on offense, if we're lagging, that is some bad news. So hopefully that lag doesn't last too much longer because that was bad. And right there, that's a foul. Back to making excuses, man. I got to stop making these excuses and just start playing better D like that. Also, I've got to stop taking dumb shots like that. Man, so we're about to be down at halftime for the first time this video. This could be bad if we end up losing this one. I don't want to lose a game. I mean, to be fair, I shouldn't want to lose a game. We're trying to go 12-0. Losing would absolutely suck, so... That was, I thought he was going to try and intercept the pass. That was a smart charge. This guy is smart. This guy is smart. I got to be better, for real. Because this guy has been handing it to me. He's not getting those dunk animations he was getting earlier. And that's a contested layup. We're getting more stops, but we're not taking advantage because we're not scoring. Okay, LeBron. Nice pass. Very nice. Bad time shot, though. At the end of the first quarter, we were up by one. Now we're up by... Down by two, actually. Excuse me. Once again, not sustainable, but... Boris Diaw decides to foul. 
we're going to be fine in the second half. I know how to adjust, but he is kind of destroying me inside. We've only given up 34. It's not as bad as giving up like 40 points, but I know exactly what I need to fix. I definitely got to be better defensively. Without a doubt, got to be better on defense. No, double team. Oh, wow. This is my first time I've been locked into the gameplay so far. This is my first time I've been locked into the gameplay. If I lose this game, the gameplay is over, man. Like, all of this recording I've been doing goes to waste if I lose this game. Literally all of it goes to waste, which is heartbreaking, but it happens. Big shot. Bad half. I think we got the ball back, so low-key, that was a really big shot. Oh, no, he gets the ball back, so that was an even bigger shot. He has Shaq back in. He has Moses Malone back in. Let me get my starters back in, and let's see if we can do something this half. I got to take advantage of this lineup he has in. That's a bad shot. Got to get the rebound, though, man. Ha! Ah, little things, man. Little things. Like that. Or we can swing this game back our direction. Getting rebounds. Great defense. Didn't want to shoot that, but it goes in. I'll admit that was 100% BS. 4 nothing run. We scored the last four points. Okay, Shaq's a bully, man. That was a beast move by Shaq. Oh, we scored the last four points easily. We've scored easily the entire game, I feel like, but we just got to be better, for sure. We got to be better. That's the theme. We've been good, but we got to be better, especially defensively. That's so bad. He's just abusing that baseline, and I can't do anything about it. That was... That was some, I called his possession some BS. That was some BS, too. We just ran it down so easily. Ooh, it's a good thing John Wall couldn't shoot that. Moses Malone. What? I didn't know Moses Malone was popping threes. Moses Malone can shoot? I thought that his facing was just so bad because of Moses Malone. I didn't know Moses Malone was out here raining down threes. Okay, we got the two points back. But... I had no idea Moses Malone, of all guys, was raining threes. I had. That's new to me, for real. If I, if I don't change things up, he will win. And this gameplay will be a waste. If I don't change things up now. Especially defensively, man. And that's not even a bad shot. We got to change things up, and now. If I'm really sweating, I could do defensive settings. Low-key, I might have to sweat. But until then, let's see if we can just prevent him from getting to the rim. Because that's what's been killing us. Him getting to the rim has been killing us. And offensive rebound has been killing us, too. Every possession down, he's getting a bucket. He's actually almost shooting better than we are. It's crazy that we're shooting better because he has just a two-possession lead. It's crazy that he's shooting better. <sighs> Let's see if we can get something, man. That's not good. We needed something right there. We didn't get it. Pressure's on me, man. Pressure's on me. Am I going to crack? Or can we make this comeback happen? Kanye said it. Or no, Jay-Z said it. Pressure's on, but guess who ain't going to crack? Part of me, I had to laugh at that. Those were the lyrics. Good song. Diamonds are forever, man. Diamonds are forever indeed. I could totally do defensive settings, man. I can totally do defensive settings. Low-key, let's do it. I don't do this often. I can't even remember what all my settings are. I think these are the right settings I'm doing, but we'll see. I guess we'll have to see how well it works. I think that's it right there. 
I'm not sure if those settings are going to come through for me big, but we have been a little bit better defensively. It's just that we also got to get rebounds. And that Shaq really has been a beast getting rebounds. I'm not going to zone up because he has guys who can shoot. Yeah, this game is going to come down to the wire, bro. This game is going to really come down to the wire. If he makes this, that's cool. He missed the first one. Seven-point game. We can make it a two-possession game right here. Maybe even a four-point game. Big shot, Steph. Missed it. Get it back to Blake. See if we can make something happen here. Oh my God, dude. Not looking good. We needed that right there. Steph's three, we needed it. And then we needed... Uh, we needed that right there, too. He saves that. And then the baseline's open. Ah. Uh, things have not been going my way. But also, it's just little things I gotta do better. Really little things. That's got to be a little bit deflating to the defense, guys. Getting kicked right there. I don't want to shoot that with LeBron. Curry's open, though. We need that. We need that, man. Curry's bricking all these open threes, dude. Oh, my Lord. How's Curry missing all these open threes? Dude, that is two threes, and every, every shot I miss results in a bucket for him. That is not good at all. Been struggling here on offense. Yeah, bit of we need this one, Chef. Sure. Come on, Chef. He has takeover all of a sudden. He has takeover now? Where was that? Okay. I mean, it's, hey, he has takeover. So we can make a run at this thing now. It's good that he has takeover. I could get mad at him for missing, but at the end of the day, it's just good that he has takeover. Great defense. We want to force in the middle. We'll take that, honestly. We'll take that. I'm cool with that. If we can go crazy with Chef Curry, that would be huge. But I'm chucking up bricks with him, man. I don't want to say I'm getting desperate because I'm not, but we got to be better, dude. We get the ball to start the fourth quarter. A stop in a bucket is huge right here. That'll be his second foul of the game. Inside. Another poster, man. Dunking on me. We're missing open threes. And it doesn't take a whole lot of effort for Gasol to dunk it home. At seven feet tall, he uses his height to power. A bucket right here is mandatory. It'll be like a two for one. That's a big shot. Steph Curry's missing. And we're not getting rebounds. And we're not playing good defense in the paint. And we're down by 10, and if we lose this game, the game plays over, and literally all everything I've been doing so far, all the commentary, is all for nothing. So pressure's on me, man. Am I going to crack, or are we going to come back? I don't think we're going to crack. I don't think we're going to crack. Back-to-back -back buckets, see? 4 nothing run in the span of less than 4 seconds. All because we got the buzzer beater, and we got a bucket right after. But I'm just telling you, man, he's getting some glitchy animations. I'm playing some bad D. Oh, you're right. Oh, and with the lead they're enjoying, I'm surprised he didn't put a little something But just like that, six in a row on offense. Once Stephen Curry starts to cook, it's like an avalanche. The guy can score at will from anywhere. Great D. He's been doing that the whole game. That's what's been killing me. Got to credit the defense. They found a way to stop him, and that's never an easy task. Got a post mismatch. CJ's open though. There we go. I wish he would get behind the three point line, but any two matters at this point. At least we got the two. Because we know what he's doing. We're just not stopping it, which sucks. Ten point or twelve point lead down to five, down to four. Can he shoot? Oh, that's Gugliata. I thought that was Bobby Jones for some reason. Let's keep it up. I'm definitely not worried about his handles. 
But that's what I am worried about. Him getting inside and LeBron having zero impact on the shot. That's what I am worried about. That's what I'm worried about. No hurry, no rush. No Steph behind the three-point line. All Steph had to do was stay behind the three-point line. Thank God we got the bucket right there. And it comes off an assist from Griffin. You've got to have a short memory. Put a core first half in your rear view and now make an impact. I'm being so careful on offense. Oh, making sure we only get twos, but low-key, we got to start popping threes. They've held a 12-point lead earlier. I expect the pass, and man, that was a big inbound steal, too. I should have taken advantage. Big shot. Great D. One-point game, just like that. I told you guys I knew how to stop it, but we just weren't. We just weren't stopping it. Humongous defense. Great defense. We need a bucket right here no matter what. He's got his starters back in, so we need a bucket no matter what. Nope. That's not what we needed. Lane's wide open for Blake. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go. Woo, man. It's going to be on John Wall. Still there we go. 12-point lead all the way down to nothing. That would have been a big free throw, but we're good for now. Listen, there's no doubt he feels like they should have the lead, but that miss will keep it all tied up. Big possession. Three with Curry would be huge. Three with anybody would be huge. Let's run that pick and roll. Deciding where to go with it. Pass to Griffin. Down to five on the shot clock. On the wing. Huge shot. One stop. Curry's got 16 here in the second half. Such a clutch shooter. This guy lives for these kinds of moments. He's just scoring way too easily. Like right there, I don't get how there's no contest. LeBron. Big shot. And trying for the go ahead basket, it doesn't go in. Here's McGrady. I knew he was taking that. We need to stop, man. We need it so bad. I'm so nervous. So nervous right now. Great animation. Great animation. That's exactly what he needed. Give me that. It was a polished offensive game and an intense will to win. Griffin can definitely be trusted in crunch time. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. All the officials are all over that one. He sinks the punch free throw. And what a tremendous career for Lamarcus Aldridge. I mean, so many double doubles. A rim protector. He's going to try to go all the way. Great right, defense, Blake. Oh my God. I don't know how many of you guys are still watching, but oh my God, my heart's still pounding. We should not have had to, we shouldn't have had to come back down by 12. But, man, 
if we lose that game, video's over. Literally all the recording I've been doing, it's all done. All of it. 7-0. and oh, You guys are probably like, you should get off after a game like that. But we're literally only five wins away, so y'all know I'm going to keep on pushing forward. We need an easy game after that, please. Can we please get an easy game? Please. We're playing so many good players, so many good teams. We played versus so many Pink Diamonds that game. I would love an easier game. I would absolutely love an easier game. And or a quit. I would absolutely love it. And or a quit. Oh man, what a game that was. What a game that was. I began that game, and for most of that game, or not most of that game, for a lot of that game, I was actually talking about other stuff. But then when it was serious time, when the second half came along, I knew it was time for me to lock in, so. Oh, I'm still shaking, bro. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Big dubs in the chat, but this isn't a live stream, so there is no chat to put dubs in. What a game. What a freaking game. Steph Curry's big time. Blake Griffin's also big time. LaMarcus Aldridge is also big time. Everyone that helped us make that comeback. Steph Curry, CJ McCollum. What a big time team effort, bro. What a team effort that was. Steph Curry was bricking low key. Thankfully, we got the win. Hopefully Steph Curry stops chucking up Briggs like he did that last possession and like he did those two possessions in the third quarter last game. Also, that guy was getting some bogus. I was playing some bad defense too. I'm not going to sit here and act like I couldn't have played better. I should have played better that game. Once I started playing help defense like I did right there, we started doing better. So, Help defense is the biggest thing. Help defense is easily the most important thing. Also, that inbound steal was huge. We were down by four with what? Less than 30 seconds left. Oh, I'm still shaking, man. What a game that was. I can tell by the way this guy plays. I'm not going to have to worry too much. Also, his team's just not as good as the other guy's team. So, I am not too worried about this game. If he starts, you know, playing better, he starts playing better. But he's taking some tough shots. He's taking tough layoffs. His defense hasn't been the best. We're running in transition. Lakes open for another slam. Man. So what do you guys think is going to happen with Blake Griffin? Because I'm hearing a lot of talks about Blake Griffin going to the Rockets. I'm hearing Blake Griffin Rockets a lot. I'm hearing Blake Griffin Warriors. I'm hearing a lot of different things about Blake Griffin. I don't know what's going to happen with him, but I guess we'll have to see. I've talked about my younger brother a bit, Jonas. Let me talk about my older brother some too, Noah. Me and my friends used to make fun of, I mean to be fair, Noah was in our same group for being bandwagon. And one day we were playing basketball at the gym. And we made fun of Noah, we called him bandwagon. He said, man I've been a fan of the Heat and the Clippers for the last four years. And this was back in 2015 when both teams were good for the last four years, coincidentally. That Blake Griffin card kind of reminds me of Noah. Shout out to Noah. You guys, if you're an OG, you've definitely seen him on the channel before. I've played one-on-one -on -one against him twice. I've played one-on-one -on -one against him twice. I'm not sure if I'm going to play against him again on the channel because, I mean, I don't want to pad my record with another win versus him, even though I can see him getting a dub if he gets better. But, like, what I'm trying to say is that I'm trying to play versus new opponents. I'm trying to play versus comp in these 1v1 games. I'm trying to play versus guys who really give me a run for my money like the last guy I just played on here because every game so far before that one was a super easy win every single one was just a very easy win but that guy he knew what he was doing he gave me a run for my money and I know those are games that you guys want to see it's like going 12-0 is cool but you guys don't want to see me like literally win every game by like 30 because that's just not fun to watch that last game y'all watched that's a game that makes your heart beat it makes you get up on your seat because if we lose that game no more 12 and 0 the best we can do is 11 and 1 if we lose that game this video is over and all this recording i've been doing is for for nothing but i woke up feeling pretty confident today that i can get this 12 and 0 so that's why we're still going for it I mean, that's why we're going for it in the first place. Easy games, I love them. This game's looking like it's a lot easier than the last one, which is good. 
I would love it if this guy quit. If you guys are wondering what time it is for me now, it is 11.33, 11.33 a.m. And I remember telling you guys I was trying to get a bunch of games done before 10. This is about to be game number 8 done before 12. I mean, 8-0 and in about 3 hours isn't terrible. So I would love this guy to quit, so maybe we can even get 9-0 and before 3 hours. I would love to dunk on this guy a bit. I would love to get in his head a bit, make him quit. I have a feeling he's going to, but these last few guys, none of them have quit. So we'll see what we can do about making him quit. No promises, ladies and gentlemen. No promises at all. Because we're going to have to get in his head a bit. We're going to have to give him a reason to quit. If he's getting stops on defense now and then, if he's blocking my shots, if he's scoring, then he probably thinks he's still in the game. So we got to, yeah, we got to do some stuff about that. He does have Doug Collins, though. So he might or might not be trying to do some challenges which means he might or might not quit, but we'll see. That's what we need. We need to dunk on him, get some easy buckets, little things like that. So, I haven't talked about this in a long time, and this wasn't really on the agenda, but you guys got super excited back when I was playing versus Royal Ryan, one-on-one. -on -one. Shout out to Ryan again. Who, I mean, what was I about to say? I want to play versus guys who y'all want me to play against, but of course, but of course, guys who you may want me to play against, I might not be able to play versus them because of time, distance, things like that. But who are some guys you would want to see me play some 1v1s against? I'm not sure if Alonzo is watching this or not. Shout out to my boy Alonzo Bozen. I would love to play versus him 1v1. I would love to play versus him, and I don't think it's going to be an easy dub. He said he's played basketball before. He has an awesome channel. I can tell by, I can tell he has, he said he works out, he said he does stuff like that. He definitely has a good build for basketball. I would love to 1v1 him. That would be dope sometime. But he said he splits time in like Florida, Atlanta. I know he's mentioned LA before. I'm not sure, but I would love to 1v1 some guys who you want me to 1v1 instead of 1v1 and guys who I want to 1v1 all the time. Because keep in mind, I raid guys who you guys want me to raid, and sometimes I'll raid guys who I want to raid. Man, I got all these stream thoughts in my head. Raids, stuff like that, talking to the chat. Right now, I should just be 100% focusing on making this guy quit. I should definitely be focusing on making this guy quit. Let's see if we can go crazy with Steph. Sometimes a little bit of Steph sauce is what makes guys quit. I already talked about the Golden State Warriors earlier. I was about to go off on the tangent talking about them, but I already talked about them. I think they're going to be a great team in the West. You know what? I think I mentioned this earlier, but I didn't actually do it. Who is going to make the playoffs next year, man? Let's talk about it. Who is going to make the playoffs? Right here, right now, I'm giving you guys my official ahead of the gap or ahead of the draft. Way too early, CP the Doc, Western Conference playoff predictions. Number one, we got the Lakers. I mean, I picked them earlier in this video to go back to back, I think. If I didn't, then my memory sucks, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned them going back to back at some point. I think they're going to go back to back. That's what I'm going to say. I think they're going to pick up somebody. I'm not sure who. So they'll pick up somebody. Because we, we see all these other teams picking up guys. We see the Bucks picking up guys. We see the Nets, who are pretty sure are about to pick up a guy. Like, the Lakers, I think, are going to sign somebody. And no matter who they sign, I think it plays a pretty, pretty big role in the future. Whether it's re-signing Rondo or trading for DeRozan. Even though he did just re-sign with the Spurs. I forgot to mention that earlier. I mean, he didn't re-sign. He signed an extension. So he's staying with the Spurs for another year. No guarantees on whether or not they trade him or something. I don't know. We'll have to see. We will definitely have to see. But I got the Lakers at number one. If we're talking regular season, it's tough because I would love to put the Clippers at two for the second straight season. I would love to say the Clippers are number two, 100% smothered layup for the second straight year. But, I mean, you never know how a team like the Nuggets is going to step up next year. 
which is why at two and three interchangeably, I got the Nuggets and I got the Clippers. I'm not sure which one's actually going to end up being second. All I know is that two and three is going to be the Nuggets and the Clippers. But you know who else could sneak it up to number two or three? Could definitely be the Warriors. And I know some of you guys watching this right now are Warriors fans. That's no disrespect to the Warriors, but like I said, they got to add some depth. And I'm not sure if they're going to do that. I think if, that, if, if they even add two or three good guys to bring off their bench, and by good, I'm not talking about like guys like Lou Williams or Montrez Harrell. I'm talking about guys who can just come in, get a few buckets, and play some good defense. Some decent defense. Because you don't need all five guys on the court to be locked down defenders. And the Miami Heat showed us that in the playoffs. The Heat have guys who are good defenders. Jimmy Butler, Jay Crowder, Bam Adebayo is a great defender, Andre Iguodala is a great defender. Those guys are all great defenders. But then you see guys like Duncan Robinson who get a lot of minutes. And he's not a lockdown stellar defender or anything like that. Duncan Robinson's no lock. D. Rob is not a lockdown defender. David Robinson's a lockdown defender, but Duncan, nah, he's not a lockdown defender. Tyler Hero, not a lockdown defender. Goran Dragic, I love Goran Dragic, man. Not a lockdown defender. You got a bunch of guys who can defend, and you got a bunch of guys who can't. But when everybody's on the same page, offensively and defensively, when you got guys with good chemistry, when you got a good coach and a good game plan, when you have good veterans, you can be a good defensive team, man, just like the Heat were. Just like the Heat were this season, even though you don't have all lockdown defenders on the squad. So the Warriors, their bench unit all those years ago with, we had Igad, well not we, I'm not a Warriors fan, they had, they had Igadala, great defender of course, especially in the playoffs. You had Sean Livingston who had great length, so even if he was a step slower, because keep in mind, I mean he did go through a lot of injuries early in his career, and he was a big journeyman before playing in Golden State. Someone like Sean Livingston who has length but can also score. Mid-range specialist who gets buckets every time he comes in the game. Not marketed as a lockdown defender, you know? Not 100% known as a lock, but a guy who can defend. They need guys like that. Guys like that. Low-key guys. Sean Livingston's a low-key guy. Say what you want to. Sean Livingston was a beast. But nobody knew that. Actually, people knew that. What am I talking about? I'm talking crazy. I'm talking real crazy right now. We're well, not talking crazy, but like, come on. He wasn't averaging like 30 a game, but he played his role, and that's what I'm trying to say. They need guys who know their role, can play their role, and have like made careers out of playing their role, you know? Guys like Jordan Poole, guys like Kai Bowman, guys like Juan Toscano Anderson, I have respect for them, man. I got respect for them. They're ballers. But guys like that, they aren't on the same level as guys like you know, George Hill yet. I talked about him earlier, how good of a role player he can be. Because he plays great defense, he brings good energy, he knocks down threes, and he can create offense for himself and for others. He was huge for the Bucks in the playoffs. The Warriors need guys like that who can step up for him, bro. That's what they need. Also, at halftime of this game, you know how earlier I talked about how I low-key had something I had to be at at 12-15? Yeah. I'm not going to be there because I thought some of these games were going to go by faster. I'm not going to be able to make it to that, so I'll just reschedule it for tomorrow since... I mean, I'll go ahead and tell y'all what it is. So UAB is doing this thing where every week they randomly select like 4 or 5% of their students, according to the email, to test for the CV, the virus. I don't want to say the whole thing because YouTube might take this video down or something like that. But they're testing random students for it. And I was selected for this week. Some of my friends were selected earlier in the semester. I was selected this week. And, yeah, I'm supposed to be on campus at 12.15. I'm actually supposed to get there at 12. And then I'm supposed to go to the Blazer Hall and test there. Yeah, I don't feel like doing that. So I'm going to go tomorrow instead. Tomorrow is a chill day. Tomorrow's the day of the draft. Tomorrow's the day you're going to be hopefully seeing this video. If I don't take an L, y'all know what I mean. Y'all know the vibes, like... Since we have the draft tomorrow night, I'm probably not going to stream, but I think this long video, it might or might not hold you guys over. And also, this is something I'd like to say. I've been grinding the entire season in my team. You know, 
ever since 2K came out, I've been grinding my team. In the first week or so, I finished up Domination. I mean, I can go here and show you guys if you don't believe me. Finished up Domination, 99 stars in every single one. Beat all the teams in each single division. I got my 450 triple threat wins. I got all the diamonds in triple threat online and offline. I also got Chuck Person out of the vault. I got a lot of tokens, a lot of MT, got level 40. I'm done with all the spotlight challenges so far. We've been grinding ever since the game came out, but I haven't grinded much Unlimited, which is why I decided to clamp down these last weeks and go for this Blake Griffin. Patrick Ewing. Not Blake Griffin, that's Patrick Ewing. Eight games down, four games to go. We're going for Ewing, like I said. Let's see if we got another easy game. I doubt we do, though. I thought that was the exact same guy for one second. I really did. I thought I was matching up with the exact same guy just because I saw that Darren Williams and some other diamonds. He's got a solid team. He's got a solid team. I'm not really scared of it, though. This is looking like it could be 9-0 if we catch a dub in this one. If we catch a dub in this one, that is 9-0. He's got some decent guys off his bench, too, but... I don't think anybody's going to be holding the team I put together. Shout out to Dean Wade. Shout out to Dean Wade. Best bronze card in the game. All right. Let's get it. I think he's going to do some defensive settings. If he does settings, I'm going to do them too. Because why not? I did defensive settings in the game we came back and won earlier. So I low-key might as well do some defensive settings here too. And while I'm at it, let me go ahead and cancel this appointment. Like I said, I'll go to it later this week. I'll reschedule it to tomorrow. I don't know why I said later this week. I really am stumbling over my words. I also kind of have to take a piss. All right. Tomorrow at... Yeah, sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. I'll reserve my appointment for tomorrow. Oh, yeah, this guy's taking a second to do his settings. So I'm going to make sure to take a second to do mine, too. All right, defensive settings, moderate, off ball, tight, force middle, on ball screen, go over, on ball screen center, go over, hedge, no hedge, no hedge, don't stay attached, no, don't stay attached, get behind in the post, go over screens, and we are set. He's got a good team, he took a second to do his settings, so he might or might not know what he's doing, let's find out. Eight games down, four games to go playing this one on our home floor and he does kind of know what he's doing because he did do those defensive settings right there he put DeMar DeRozan on Steph Curry which is a smart decision he also got two blocks in the first possession two blocks on some seemingly open shots he's also taking it slow on offense so let's see where this is going he seems like a solid player this should be a fun game for y'all to watch Running pick and roll. Good spacing. Wise Blake Griffin helping. I guess I forgot to do my no help. But then again, even when you turn off help defense, every now and then your CPUs will still help. So right there, that's a possession that got ruined all because my guys didn't want to play defense and he's full court pressing. Yeah, this is going to be a game right here. This is going to be a game, all right. This is going to be a game for sure. If he's full court pressing and he did defensive settings and all that stuff, this is going to be a game for sure. There we go. The first time, I got him in the air in the post with Aldridge, and he jumped. But then I got blocked by Zion, I think. So right there, that's what we should have gotten the first time. Y'all saw it, I saw it. He's in the press, he's playing good defense, or alright defense. You can argue Steph Curry should have made that first dunk. You can also argue that Lamarcus Aldridge shouldn't have gotten such a bad animation. He's greening. Yeah, this, this is going to be a tough game, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a tough one for sure. And right there, he jumps to block the shot, but tips the pass. So things are certainly going his way early. But let's see if we can make him mad. Steal the inbound. I love talking to y'all, but this game I will have to clamp down and focus a bit, I can tell. I can tell. 
I can 100% tell this is going to be one of those games because this is one of those guys. And when I say one of those guys, it's crazy that y'all know exactly what I mean. I know y'all do. James up top. And foul on the shot. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one, man. But I like the pace we're playing at. We're not going too fast. That game earlier that I won by one, we were going. We were running and gunning, bro. We were going fast in that game. I hope this game is at least done before I got to go to class. That would be nice because I don't want to have to be late to class or anything. That would suck. Ah, he can shoot from the corner. He can shoot from the corner, so I got to watch that. No? Interesting. Let me post spin. Nice. Whew, yeah. I would keep on talking basketball, but this guy's shown that this is going to be an interesting game. This is going to be an interesting one. Anybody who full court presses, you, you can tell it's going to be interesting. I know how to break that press, but like, I can tell he knows how to operate in that press too. That was risky. That's a play I can't make. And he's playing hard on those screens. LeBron James on the Low key. Can I attack this? I think I can. I guess I can. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting game, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to say it. This guy could. This could be a tough one, man. He's playing super slow. And he's playing off ball defense. And he's corner sitting. So. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a game, all right. This is gonna be a game for sure. This could potentially be the toughest game we've played, potentially. The other guy, I don't think he was this smart. That other guy, it shouldn't have been as close. It definitely shouldn't have been as good of a game because he was just driving in and I was admittedly playing some terrible D. This guy though, he has the strategies down. These full court press strategies, they probably get him a lot of wins. They probably get him some rage quits, some dubs. He's playing five out. Low key, I could sag off to Rosen, but like, I just gotta play better man to man right there. I can definitely get him with Curry though. The reason why I shot that is because I was expecting him to actually bait me to shoot that and go back on LeBron. So he got me with that one for sure. Blake? What was that? I need you to dunk that, my brother. Low key. I don't think a full court press would be such a bad idea. And I did do defensive settings, so I can kind of rely on an off ball a little bit, maybe. We'll see. But shots like that, come on, 2K. He's scoring every time. I'm scoring practically every time. These are the games where you're like, someone's got to give. Eventually. Yeah, he's just sitting in the off-ball defense. It's weird, man. It is insanely weird. But if we keep on scoring every time and get some stops, we're going to be... We'll be all right, I think. I want to play a zone. But I know that Chris Mullen could potentially kill me. Potentially. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen either, though. Versatility he possesses makes him a very tough cover, guys. Back to Curry. We have the last shot, though. Did he win the jump ball? I'm asking y'all as if y'all can hear me and I can respond to me. I think I won the jump ball, but I could be wrong. That was a big shot, though. Let's see if we can get a stop to end the first quarter. Oh, my God. I reached in, but apparently that did nothing. If we won the jump ball, we have a chance to score at the beginning of the second quarter, but I can't stop him. He can't stop me. It's a little bit of an inception right now. This is our 9-0 game, right? If we win this game, we're 9-0. So this is a big game, bro. I remember back in 2K19, it was always the 9-0 game that, that got me, man. It was always the 9-0 game. Let's try a zone for one possession. I'm going to play strong on this side and try to bait the pass to DeRozan. And if he goes middle, we can get a steal like that. Let's go, Steph. We needed that. 
it wasn't urgent, but that would have been nice. Uses the glass to finish the layup. Williamson's got the opening field goal of the second quarter for Philadelphia. We needed that too. Well, we didn't need it, but it would have been nice. If he's going to off ball, we could maybe get that every time. I'm going to play hard on this side of the zone and see if I can bait the pass to DeRozan. I know how to break a zone. He probably knows how to break a zone too. But yeah, look at that. My CPUs are playing. I swear they're calling a lot more fouls on jump shooters this year, bro. I swear. It's going to be on Blake Griffin. And the also, this guy is getting a lot of greens with no green. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm not seeing the greens under his feet. I like how we're playing. I like the shots we're getting. Let's see if I can get a snatch back three right here. Perfect, yeah. I can do that every time if I wanted to. In our two possessions of zone, we've been good. Our two possessions of zone defense have been really good. We've gotten good shots both times. But we four shots that I'm okay with both times. And right there, he makes another contested layup. That was almost very risky. Scoring just fine. Just missing open shots. Our zone has been fine. We've contested two shots. One of them was a foul call, apparently. And he's just trying to draw help. That's what he's trying to do. That's great defense right there. I thought that was a good contest, but I guess it wasn't. I want to say I got to get out of the zone, but I think the zone's fine, to be honest with you. Our zone has been solid so far, unless he completely starts breaking it. If he starts really breaking the zone and getting, like, completely uncontested shots where I'm not even close to him, then I'll get out of the zone. I'll get out of the zone. Like, I'm cool with that. I just want to stop giving up the threes. I also want to stop giving up the layups, too. Got a mismatch right here as well I can attack. I just realized that. I just realized Blake had a mismatch. I like the way we're playing the zone. I might keep that up. He's also attacking the middle very hard. That's the second time I've gotten that exact same steal. No! Shoot a three, Steph. I'm, I was going to say Steph is selling, but it's low-key me. Because I can control the shots he takes. We're playing fine, though. I like the way we're playing the zone. So far, I'm loving it. If we get a shot right here, that would be huge. Left the middle open. Nice. Our defense has really picked up since the first quarter, and it's because of this zone. I can tell he knows how to break the zone, but he's, he's having some careless turnovers. And I'm also cool with leaving DeRozan open. I just got to make sure he doesn't get anything in the paint. That's the reason why I'm playing the zone in the first place, because he was getting a lot of easy layups. Now he's weighing the entire possession. What's he going to do here? Did he just connect or something? Please miss that. I shouldn't have even risked that. That was way too open. There we go. Just like that, we're up by six. We just changed the zone, and all of a sudden, we're getting some easy looks. So play close on Darren. Don't let him shoot. I can't let Mullen shoot either. We're on the same side of the zone. Yeah, there we go. That's a good, that's a good contest right there. It, I know it doesn't say it was contested, but that was just an awkward shot. That was just an awkward attempt right there with me literally right next to him. It's just been one of those games, and they need to find a way to turn it around before it gets completely away from them. Very nice, Steph. He's taking more awkward shots. We are forcing some misses and some bump turnovers, which are cheesy, but we got to live with them. Right here, go over and guard Darren. Don't let him shoot. Ah, no, that's the one guy we can't help off of. He knows how to break that zone, but it's not the way that I break the zone. By passing it around, it's the cheesy way. By pump faking until someone helps. He breaks the zone the cheesy way. I break the zone the real way, but nobody I've played against today has really played zone, so I can't really show that I break the zone the right way. Great tip, though. Cross-court man's wide open. Got to prevent the swing pass. Now Darren's open again. Got to run over. 
And once again, awkward shot. 22% contested. It, it's not like 30% or 40% contested, but that's just an awkward shot. And now the baseline's open again, and we're on the verge of going up double digits. Good first quarter, much better second quarter. He thinks these shots he's missing are open, but they're just awkward shots that he shouldn't be taking. Ill-advised. Wow. LaMarcus does have rim protector, so that's fair. Good quarter. Great quarter. Any quarter where you outscore the guy by like 8 or 9, especially like 10 or 11, is a good quarter. He's got Francis in now and Paul George. But he still has DeRozan, and DeRozan's a liability shooting the ball. So if he goes middle like this and fakes, I just got to make sure I'm there guarding Chris Mullen just like that. I'm forcing these awkward shots. Like, even there, that wasn't a super contested shot, but it was an awkward shot. The shots he's getting aren't great every time down the floor. So I guess here's my 101 class for breaking the zone. Right here, he's got Paul George, so I got to get back on Paul George. He's going to pump fake and try to pass to the corners. That was a late contest by LeBron. And now he's in this full court press. We can get this. If we can just score every time, we're good. He can score every now and then. We just got to make sure we're efficient on defense. I usually don't play zone. You guys know this. You guys see my videos. I rarely play zone. But sometimes you have to. Because this guy just wants to go in the paint and take twos the entire time. But we can't let him do that. See, he's exchanging threes for twos. He's giving me the two and he's taking the threes. So I got to stop the three now and then. And I got to get some of those steals just like that every now and then too. You want to play up top right here and cut off the pass. And if he plays help like that, you got to be ready to play help right here with the center. But Lamarcus just didn't really get up right there, sadly. To break the press, come middle. Pass the ball to the ball handler. Snatch back. That didn't work, though. I got to stop acting like this is a tutorial. This is just a gameplay. If I win this game, that's nine wins down. Also, in 30 minutes is my Zoom class for anybody who's wondering about that. So soon, I'm going to have to actually, you know, log into my class. Great. Great job. Steal the pass to the middle. Ah! Still great defense. Hey, great possession, man. I mean, we got posterized right there. Getting posterized is not terrible defense. And now he's getting back with Cat to make sure I don't get any easy twos. And Curry has takeover. Curry's got takeover, which means... I can get some cheesy buckets like this. He's got to worry about Curry now. See, if we get one stop, we're right back up by double digits. And we're doing a good job defending in the zone. He's penetrating, but the only reason why he's penetrating is to get that cheesy help defense where you get in the lane and pump fake. Let's go, Curry. See, all we got to do is get a stop here and there and maintain. I can now come middle with Curry because DeRozan's on the left side. So I can overload right here and contest Chris Mullen. If he tries to go back to Francis, I'm there. But right there, I should have just played with Curry the whole time. I wish you can control all five guys, but we all know that's impossible. I wish we could, though, man. Because if I can control all five guys, Curry would have known not to freaking sag off right there. Chris Mullen's the best shooter on the court. I know you can do defensive settings for individual players, but as is, we're up by 11, so might as well just keep on playing. Oh, lag. He's going to try it again. Good contest. We're 100% okay with that. In fact, we want him to shoot twos. I'm 100% okay with giving up twos, because we're going to get twos every time right back. Run, Blake, run. You can have that with DeRozan. You can have those with DeRozan. I've been saying this the entire game. DeRozan's their liability. That's the reason why I'm even playing zone, because, I mean, yeah, we're giving up a lot of twos. Yeah, we gave up a lot of twos in the beginning. But having DeRozan out there is a big liability for him. I think he shot like two or three threes with him. I know he hasn't made a single one. Let's try it again. That's cheat cheese strategy, man. Didn't work immediately. Damn, see, I'm telling you, man. All he wants to do is get in the middle of the paint, pump fake, and shoot threes. 
And if he doesn't get the three the first time, he kind of just takes the first thing he gets, which is usually a two. So, if you break down your opponent a bit, you find out what their game plan is, it's not super tough, but sometimes your, these opponents can get kind of... They can get cheesy, man. They can get awfully cheesy. We're beating them with a super basic offensive strategy, though. Double-digit lead going into the fourth quarter would be huge. We know exactly what he's trying to do, so good job cutting him off right there. Ah, see right there with second LeBron helped. And now he's going to take the two. First thing available after the three doesn't work. We get the strats now. We understand the winning strats. Oh, LeBron. Please miss that. My game lagged, and he made it. Thankfully, it didn't lag on the shot attempt. Or while I was trying to defend it, I guess. <sighs> All right. Two more guys would take over. Nine point lead, or seven point lead's fine. I just gotta make sure he doesn't get hot from deep. Good foul. All righty. All righty, righty, righty. No three. Awkward shot, but greens it. We deserve that. I think it's our ball, though. So, even though he did cut our, what, 12-point lead down to four, we have a chance to score again at the beginning of the fourth quarter. I'm pretty sure. We really haven't been winning many jump balls, man. I kind of just realized that. All right. No more dumb full-court press turnovers. I almost turned it over right after I said that. Very nice. Management, man. All we need is to manage the clock. One stop is huge. One stop right here is huge. That's a decent contest. 23% contested. I thought that was another one of those awkward shots I was talking about, but he's been making those last few minutes. Maybe my strategy's not that good. Come on, Steph. Ah, no. Just like that, he's got a chance to tie. It's not over yet, man. I've been comfortable this game, but now he's back within three. So, like, I could throw the game away if I'm not careful. I'm cool with that. But he's getting open shots now. I got to be better on defense. Shot Blake. Just a stop now and then, man. We don't need to stop every single time. I just got to make sure I keep on leaving Damar open because he's the guy I'm cool with leaving open. He's trying to pass back me over there. Notice that. Are you kidding me? A lot of these guys I'm playing are getting bailed. But to be fair, nah, I can't think of anything. <sighs> Throw to Blake. Now Curry's open. And one right back. That's the problem of full court pressing, man. The second you get your ball up the court, your CPUs are in hot pursuit. Your CPUs, they go fast in pursuit. Chris Mullen has takeover, which I don't like, but I feel like he might start forcing some dumb shots with Chris Mullen. Might. Maybe he will. That's our ball, right? That's our ball, thank God. That was... Right there, I just got to slow down an icon. I know it's tempting to go fast in transition, but it's really no rush. Especially since this guy is pretty good. It's really no rush. He wants the threes. We know that. He's getting some tough shots to fall. I just got to make sure he doesn't shoot with Mullen or Darren. DeRozan? Fine. He can have that. I know Zion can shoot. But at this point in the game, after playing the whole game, I'm 100% cool with giving that up. Blake's got the mismatch, but Curry's the one running off screens. Let's get it to Blake. Nice, Blake. He cut my lead down to three. All of a sudden, we're back up by nine. But we were also up big at the end of the third quarter, but then he cut it down to... What was it? I can't remember. All I know is that we got to be safe. That was not safe. Should have gotten back. 
Two minutes left, up by six. Game should be over if I manage the clock correctly. Good pass, good layup. Cheesy, but effective. What time is it now? 12.08. So school's coming up. School's right around the corner. School's right on the horizon, sadly. He wants to pass to the corner. Bad timing on the shot, but I guess he made it. Where's LaMarcus at? Oh, look at this. Cheese. Should not have gotten open right there, but that's a product of the full court press. That was literally all because of the full court press. If he would just get out of the press, I don't get shots like that. But if I get out of the zone, he won't get shots like that. So if I can score right here, I think I'm going to switch back to man-to-man. -man. I might switch back to man-to-man -man here if I get a bucket here. Because the reason why he's getting the threes is because of the zone. And now is a perfect time for me to get out of the zone. Big shot. Three possession game. Let's go back man to man. Here's a cheesy thing about 2K. Something they definitely need to patch. This is something they definitely need to patch. If you go back to man to man, this next possession on defense after you first go back to man to man, it puts you back in the zone. Which is something they gotta fix, but... I guess it's not the biggest deal in the world. Let's hold the ball. He's going to go reach in. But as long as we make a shot here, we're good. And one. That should do it. That should be the dagger. We haven't gotten many quits lately. We got a nice quit last game, but the game before that, one by one. In this game, we really had to strategize and play versus this guy who was cheesing, cheesing this game. Playing versus the zone, pump faking. He was cheesing. And notice how even though I switched back to man-to-man, -man, we're back in zone. He misses it, though. We could go up by double digits right here. But I'm just going to let the clock run a little bit. 9-0. 9-0 feels pretty good. I clowned around too much right there. Super dumb play. <sighs> That's fair. That's fair, okay? I didn't play good D right there. Is he going to foul is the question. Nah, we'll just hold the ball again. Let me not be dumb this time, though. Let me move it around, find the open guy. He's in the zone now. I'm going to break the zone by passing. Look at this beautiful ball movement. Eventually find the open man at the end of the shot clock. Open man's LeBron for the dagger. And it's good. You can break a zone by passing the ball around. That's what I learned back in high school. Also, why didn't he use Clay? If he had used Clay instead of DeRozan... He could have won this thing, but too late. Not too late. Not too late at all. Okay, maybe too late. Taking a bit too long on that possession. Okay, really? If I literally just inbound it, it's over. Shouldn't have won by just two, but a win's a win's a win's a win's a win's a win's a win. A win's a win's a win's a win's a win. So two of our last three games... The game that we just played right here, and the game before the game before this game, combined, winning by three. I told you guys we were going to play at least two close games. Hopefully we don't have to play another close game. Hopefully we can just win every single one easily the rest of the time. But, I mean, not a big deal if we do have to play some tough games. We can fight through. All right, 9-0, and oh, win percentage, 90%. That's not too bad. Three games to go. Three games to go. So we're 9-0 and in this tier. In the last tier, we went 11-0. and In the tier before that, we went 10-0. and So we're on a nice 30-game winning streak. But we're not happy until we get that 33-game winning streak. We're not happy till then, bro. Until then, we're not happy. Let me pull up Canvas real quick on my phone. This guy's got a good team. That's a solid team. But... I'm not super worried about it, to be honest with you. Not super worried. I'm trying to pull up my Blazer net real quick. I'll log in, and I'll be ready for school. I'll be ready for class. Oh, wait. Am I seriously not logged in? I'm always logged in. I don't know why I'm not logged in, but let me pull up UAB. Let me start logging in. The class doesn't start for another 17 minutes, but might as well just go ahead and get things pulled up. Just so it doesn't take forever when I actually need to pull up my stuff.
So while he's doing his settings, I'll pull up my classes. For my class, excuse me. All right, just logged in. I forgot about this duo security thing. And once he's done with his settings, I'll do my settings too. I usually don't check my phone during streams, but this is not a stream, so I think it should be allowed this one time. Yeah, he's taking a long time making his changes. I definitely deserve to make my changes too. You guys saw those defensive settings work last game, but y'all didn't get to see him too well because he was in his zone. So maybe this guy will, I don't know, not do that. We'll have to see. We will certainly have to see. I like how we played last game though. And you can tell that guy really wanted that win. So if we can do the same thing this game, we're going to be all right. See, my help settings, my to coach settings, they take less than 30 seconds. Well, technically, they took 31 seconds right there, but y'all get the picture. Let me pull up my online classes page, and let's keep on rolling. All righty, let's keep it up. Lamarcus well, Aldridge is guarding Wilt Chamberlain, which I don't like. I'm not a big fan of that matchup. But he has Damian Lillard guarding... He has Damian Lillard guarding Steph, which I do like a lot. I love it, actually. I love it a lot. He has LeBron. He's got... This is power forward. Paul George. I like him guarding Blake Griffin, too. I can sag back on that. If his center is Wilt, I gotta know. I can sit back. Because the reason why I gave up that open dunk is because I was not sitting back. And he jumped. Interesting. He might need to help on that. Blake Griffin's a little bit too much of a beast in the post. But this game, I might have to play a little bit of off-ball D. Because I want LaMarcus to back off on the screen just like this. Just like that. And if he throws the pass, I'll steal it. Just like that. Another screen. I'm going to do the same thing. If he tries to dunk, that's cool. But that's a super awkward shot. He could have made that, though, if he timed it a little bit better. But he didn't, so no need to worry about that any longer. Let's go, LaMarcus. You're a beast, man. All right, so unless he puts in a shooting big, we're just going to do the same thing. He's going to try to go to the rim. Well, actually, no. I tried there is an example of where I should have stepped up because he went to the rim the first few times he did that, but right there he actually took the three, which is a very smart decision. Let's post up again, dunk on Wilt. And just like that, we're off to a good start versus a good team. Let's see if I can frustrate him a bit. Make him quit. I would love to have one more game done before class. I have been going for almost... Has it been three hours? I think it's been over three hours, to be honest with you. Hopefully my camera's still recording, too. Imagine if it's not. I guess I'll check after this game. It's not that urgent, but I should probably check that soon. Just in case, you know? Also, I know earlier I said I might not edit this video. I might actually make a few edits. A few. Nothing insane. Like, I'm not going to chop out silences like that one. I think I'll keep that. But there are some things I might cut out. Some things I said earlier. If you're seeing this, then I might or might not have cut those things out. Because if you see this video, that means I probably succeeded at my goal of being a 12-0 champion. Here's Griffin. Let's go, Blake. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Uh, he's a Blake's been big for me, man. Last game, I think Blake was the leading scorer. I know Curry had a great game, but I'm pretty sure last game it was Blake who went crazy for the team. As long as he has Wilt in, though, I'm going to keep on dropping. I'm going to play high for one second, go over the screen just like that, and then I'll sit in the paint like this. Perfect. See, it's a combination of on-ball and off-ball D. It's not purely on-ball defense, but it's also not 100% off-ball defense. Because you got to recover. When he goes downhill towards the basket at such a high speed, you got to recover. You have no choice but to recover. Unless you want him to dunk on your head, or shoot a three, or pass to the roll man and do either of those things as well. I'm not a fan of this matchup. McCollum on McGrady, not a fan of that matchup. Paul George and Blake, I love that matchup, though. Paul George is not going to be scoring on Blake super easily. 
Francis shouldn't be scoring on Curry. Look, he actually didn't get the blow by right there, which is surprising. Great defense by Blake, and like I said, scoring on Blake's not easy, man. That's why I like that matchup. Nice pull up and transition. And hey, if he had missed it, I would have been right there to get it. Oh, I forgot we're not in the zone. This is a different guy. I forgot we're not in the zone anymore. Good defense right there to prevent that. Good help by Blake. That was not good help, actually. I lied. That was a little bit weak, to be honest with you. I don't think Francis can guard Curry. I like this matchup. And Blake Griffin's going to knock that down. If he hadn't shot that, he would have pulled up and dunked it. Great start versus a, a guy who clearly knows what he's doing. He just doesn't know what he's doing enough. Right there, notice how I sag off because I'm not worried about LeBron's pull-up. In next-gen, this LeBron can shoot the lights out. In current-gen, not really. And I would know because I have LeBron in my lineup. The exact same LeBron. That's going to happen every now and then. That game of one by one, that happened a lot. That happened a whole lot. All right. 20-9 lead. And like I said, I like how this game's going so far. I like the matchup we have. I like the mis 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 ah, mis yeah, yeah, the, the, the mismatches we have. Excuse me. I can't talk. To be fair, I've been talking for so long, so excuse me if I make a mistake. And like I said earlier, I'm streaming tonight, so I'm going to do the exact same thing tonight. I'm going to make mistakes talking, man. It's not going to be pretty. Came up too far right there. Chamberlain. <sighs> And you got to respect the size McGrady has easily seen over the defense there. I would love if this guy quit, but if he doesn't, I like how this game's going so far. He can't stop my offense. Notice that. He can't do much to stop the offense. Ah, but he is getting a lot of downhill dunks. With Wilt, we're stopping that pretty much every time. The one he gets Paul George in that pick and roll, we're having a bit of trouble. A bit of trouble. 26 points in the quarter is great, though. Should have stolen that. Nice rotation on defense. But, man, he's getting past CJ every time. We're going to sub Jimmy Butler in there. Let's get Jimmy Buckets in there to guard Tracy McGrady. I think that's a good idea. Instead of me literally just letting him score every time down the court. Team Max the one who's killing us right now. Outside Curry. That was a terrible shot, but I'll live with it. Double-digit lead at the end of one. It's been a while since we've had a double-digit first quarter lead. I'm feeling pretty good. Let me join my Zoom class right now, and we'll be good. I also might have to turn off my audio. I think you guys will still be able to hear the music, but I'm going to have to turn off my speaker. Eventually. It's not 12.30 yet. It is 12.21. You guys see it at the top right corner right there. This guy's doing decently, man. Low key. I showed you how the zone worked last game. Let's see if the zone works versus this guy. He's going downhill every time, throwing a lot of dangerous passes. Let's see if the zone works versus this guy. I come up right here, cut off the pass. And yeah, he's opening the... Ooh, that was not good. That was not good at all. Maybe I shouldn't play the zone. I don't know. I'm indecisive. I really am indecisive because I feel like that was a good possession for a little while, but then everybody collapsed, and I don't like it when everybody collapses like that. So honestly, we're going to try zone one more possession. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, that's great. Good contest. Actually, I'm not sure if it was. He might have just straight up missed that. I really don't know, but all I know is that I was there. So it should have been a good contest. Should have been. Yeah, let's, let's, let's stay in the zone. Let's stay in the zone defense. Once again, I'm there. It gave me a good contest that time. Let's stay in the zone. Come on, game. Don't lag. We're going to stay in the zone. I like the shots we're getting. Or the shots that he's getting, actually. We're also getting our fast break opportunities, which you do love to see. Let's stay in the zone. Right here, he's going to come around the screen hard. I'm right there. I can get right back on Durant. Perfect. 
Perfect. He thought he was open, but he wasn't open. That's exactly what we want. To make him think he's open. But what do you know? He's actually not. Nice, Blake. Is he going to quit soon? He's having trouble with the zone. Has he scored ever since we got in the zone? I feel like he scored once. He did score once. Yep, just like that. You got to have fast fingers for that, baby. Yep, got to have fast fingers. You got to have anticipation. Right there, I was controlling Curry the entire time. I bait the pass to the middle. He throws the pass to the left. I switch over because I anticipate the pass to the left, even though I'm baiting it to the middle. That made no sense. I'm sitting in the middle. He thinks the pass to the left is safe. And it wasn't, actually. That was bad D, though. Got bailed out by a bad release. And now we're up by 20. Is he going to quit? Am I going to get this quit before class starts? Y'all know I would love that. Y'all know I would love for him to quit before my class, but sadly, that might be too good to be true. Please quit. Yes! And now I can check whether or not this is actually still recording, because you never know how this works. All right, let's find out whether or not this is still recording, because... I might have accidentally pressed a button. It's still recording. It's been 3 hours, 30 minutes, and 33 seconds now. And we have two games left to win. We are almost 68 and 8. All we gotta do is win two more games. This is the first time I've made it up to Galaxy Oval in 2K21. This is easily the best I've done. If I can get 12 and 0 first try, I would love that so much. Because I, I literally haven't even tried to do it yet. This is my first time. And I've trusted... No, I said that sentence wrong. What I meant to say is, trust me, I've experienced the heartbreak of going 11-1. and one, And I really don't want that to happen, but this guy's got a team that makes it look like he's going for that 11-1. This guy looks like he's ready to take me down. That's a solid team. It gets me a little bit nervous, to be honest with you. So, I'm going to turn off my speaker. You guys can still hear the music. I'm going to lock in these last two games i'm nervous man i really am nervous well actually i don't think i'm nervous i think i just have to pee to be honest with you i'm nervous but on the surface i'm calm and ready all we gotta do is win two more games this is our 11 and 0 game he's got the better team he's got the better matchup but we know what we're doing around here at doc nation so let's lock in and see if we can get it done okay Great first shot. We beat him off the dribble. And he's going to try to beat me off the dribble too with Russ. He can shoot with Tim Duncan too, so this guy might run a five out. If he does, then I'm going to have to play some zone. If not, if he shoots shots like that every time, I'm literally not worried about this game one bit. Shouldn't have shot that, actually. That was actually a really bad shot. But it resulted in this great start versus a great team he's taken two pretty dumb shots or actually he's only shot once it's just that the one shot he took was kind of kind of low percentage well now he's taking two bad shots so now what i just said comes true all right let's reset i mean if we can get this guy out of here early i would love that he didn't do defensive settings which is a huge surprise because literally everybody's doing defensive settings I mean, these guys have played against even have me doing defensive settings. And if you were in here watching the first six games, if you didn't skip to like this game and actually watched all the first few games, you know defensive settings are not on my CP the Doc menu. Defensive settings are not a part of my agenda, but I've had to pull them out today. And I'd honestly say they've worked pretty well. I think that our defensive settings have been super effective. Give me that. I have been doing stuff like that. I've also been taking dumb contested layups like that, completely wasting the inbound steal. But it happens. It happens indeed. Great defense, LeBron. He gets the foul call, though. I'm not worried about this game. If he starts, like, taking smart shots and actually playing defense, then I'll be worried. But until then, I'm feeling good about this game. I'm feeling very good. I'm feeling sehr gut. I learned that in German class in high school. Go figure. He's leaving Curry open. I know I've shot a lot of bricks with Curry today, but he's been coming on these last few games. 
He's coming on strong. He knows it's the home stretch. He knows we're so close to getting that Patrick Ewing, and he is stepping up his game when we need him the most. So we got one game done before my class started, which surprised me already. Imagine if we get this game done too. It's probably not going to happen because my class starts in two minutes. Yeah, literally two minutes. So soon I'm going to have to actually listen in, and when the professor says my name, I'm going to have to say here. But until then, we are looking sehr gut, like I said I learned in German class. I would love it if he quit. You guys just saw him do that pause. I would love to see him quit. I would love it dearly, but if not, like I said earlier, I give guys respect who don't quit. I might not like that they don't quit, but I give them respect and I understand why they don't quit. Because, I mean, I could have quit that one game earlier when I was down by 12. I could have gotten frustrated and just ended things right there, but nope. I said, let's try to make a let's try to make a run at this thing, man. I said, let's see if we can make a push towards winning this game. And what do you know? We won the game. But then again, I wasn't so hopeless on defense. This guy might or might not be a little bit hopeless on defense. And maybe offense too, to be honest with you. I think it's the inbound steals that might push him over the top. But with a team like this. I mean, you would think the guy's pretty good, but this guy's taking tough shots. He's, to be fair, I'm kind of lighting him up with Curry, but he's not taking the best shots. He's not playing the best defense. To be fair, we don't miss, but it's been rough for this guy, and it's going to be even rougher right here when I pull up in transition. I missed. Oh, man. Let's get it back to Steph, though. He's doing so well, I might as well just keep on doing the same thing. There we go. There we go. We got him out of here, baby. 11 and 0. And my class hasn't started yet. I'm not sure if you guys can see my phone. But my class has not started yet. And we have one game to go. One game to go. Please give me an easy game. Fingers crossed. Please give me an easy game. Please. Also, my class just started. For anybody who's curious. Alrighty. I gotta answer roll call. But until then, whew, I'm locked in, I'm locked in, I'm locked in. Whew. Okay. Okay. Hey, Alan. You can't hear me, but I'm in class. Whew. I'll mute the audio, guys, once he takes attendance. But until then, final game. Whew. Final game. I'm gonna stop. You guys get the picture. He's taking attendance. I don't even know if you heard him like that. I'm so nervous. Here. All right, just took attendance. Final game. Gotta make sure I'm still muted, just in case. Just in case, I don't want to talk and not be muted. That would be so embarrassing. Okay, we're good. Is he quitting? Please quit. Oh, man. Let me mute this. All right, let's go. Nice. 
Woo. Okay. Good start. Very good start to the game. Now I'm going to start commentating now that I know I'm muted. I know I'm muted now so I can actually talk. Yes! I would love to get this guy out of here fast. I would love to get this guy out of here fast. I'm literally in class right now. And after this class is done, like I said earlier, I'm sleeping. Ray D. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Give me that. Please quit. Oh. He wants to shoot with PG. He also wants to dunk. My controller batteries are low. Double digit lead early. I'm calling it. LeBron, come in. Alley oop. Oop. It's over already. Yep. Give me that. To the left side wing. Here's Griffith. And it's sent back by Aldridge. Here's LeBron. Or oh, I missed that. George with the ball. And Griffin picks him up he missed it too, though. Another lob to LeBron coming. Never mind, he didn't even cut. All right, LeBron. Let's get something nice right here. Put on a show for the people. Oop. Yes. 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 First try. Man, we were down double digits in that one game. That would have been it. But we did it, baby. Oh, I'm so happy right now. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so insanely happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy right now. Oh, my God. I can't believe we did it. I didn't think we were going to get it done first try, but we did it, baby. I'm going to be uploading this on Wednesday, November 18th. The day of the NBA draft. We did it, baby. We did it. First try, too. I went 12-0 in the Galaxy Opal tier. Went 11-0 in the Pink Diamond tier. 10-0 in the Diamond tier. Let me pose next to my boy Patrick. Y'all know I'm a Knicks fan. That is most definitely the thumbnail right there. That is most definitely the thumbnail. Without a doubt in my mind. So are we still in the Galaxy Opal tier? We are, but we already got you in. So now I don't have to play unlimited for the rest of the season. If you made it to the end of this gameplay, you're crazy. You're weird, but I'm weird for, you know, way more reasons than just watching one of my favorite YouTubers videos. Thank you guys for watching. If you did make it to the end, Comment, seriously, because I'm seriously curious about who made it to the end of this video. This video is going to clock in at about 3 hours, 45 minutes long. I've done streams shorter than this. I literally went to the gym at 6 a.m., got breakfast at 7.30 after finishing my workout. I got home around 8.30. I got the game and recording started a little bit after 9 o'clock. And now we're done. I'm in class right now. I literally have it on my phone right here. I can flip it and prove it. I'm literally in class right now, but we got it done, baby. I don't have to play unlimited for the rest of the season. Thank you guys for watching. Drop a like on this video for me if you haven't already. Make sure to show some love in the comments. I'm uploading this in place of a stream pretty much. A three hour, almost four hour gameplay.